Yeah, beautiful. All right, guys, welcome to Make Space Space, everyone. We're here to chat about Cobra Kai tonight. That's a badass name for a dojo. Yeah, it is. Badass name for an episode. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so um, let's take it all the way back to Karate Kid, guys. Were we were we fans of the uh, back of the day of the films? Ask my mum and dad because I probably spent about an hour and a half, maybe two hours after watching the film every time as a kid, doing the famous kick. You know, you either did it off the couch or you did it. You know, you took the cushions off the couch um, <laughs> and then did it on the mat. You know, there was no one there, and you did all the commentary and everything, and like the. Dun, dun, dun. But yeah, so that is is a long answer, basically. For yes, I did like it. You just got somebody in the corner who's going, put him in a body bag, yeah! yeah. <laughs> um, no, for me, I, I wasn't a massive fan of the film, to be completely honest. Like, um, I love my 80s films, like Back to the Future, my favourite film of all time. But, um, yeah, I was, it was it was good. Like, I, well, I didn't dislike it, but Cobra Kai made me love the film even more. Like, I go back and I'd happily watch it any time now because of Cobra Kai. But that's because of Cobra Kai, I love it even more. Whereas, on its own, it was okay. That's really interesting because like usually these days, like when you see films like a Back to the Future or like a Karate Kid or the Lo or Lost Boys or whatever, like if you or, or like the Goonies, if you didn't see that as a kid, you know, and you and you watch it as an adult, especially because of how films have moved on and stuff now, like they're they're filmed totally differently, like the stories are all different. Of course they are if you know, but you know what I mean. So, like, say for example, I didn't watch Lost Boys until I was in my early 20s. And I kind of okay. It's all right, you know, but there were people that swore by it just going, Oh my god, it's the most amazing film, it's so so good. And I get it. So I wonder interestingly if you're saying that you know it didn't sort of like resonate with you as much when you were younger, that yeah. uh, you know, but now you've seen Cobra Kai, it's made you like the film. I wonder if that could happen with like other like iconic 80s films that people maybe haven't seen until they're older, if there was a series of that. You know, they could yeah. then go back and watch it and go, ah, oh, okay, I get it now. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there was a lot of 80s, like, TV shows to films or anything, or called reboots or anything, was they? I mean, um, obviously, I'm a massive fan of Back to the Future, so if they're doing the same with the Back to the Future musical, people have gone to see the musical before the film, but I very much doubt that. I mean, to me, Back to the Future is the most iconic film of all time, so everybody's seen Back to the Future. If you haven't seen it, <laughs> then what are you doing with your life? <laughs> like, it's one of those, like, Cratty Kid was kind of niche to me in the 80s like it, it's about karate or but I'm a massive wrestling fan so maybe that's why I didn't enjoy the karate kid as much because okay. I like sports entertainment and like wrestling and UFC and mixed martial arts so maybe that's why I don't know like I still enjoyed it I didn't think it was like oh my god this film's awful but um yeah Cobra Kai just made me just fall in love with the film more than I ever thought I could brilliant a bit younger as well though um so yeah, but like I said, my, my favourite film of all time is 1985, Back to the Future. It's only a year after The Karate Kid. True, true. That is true. Yeah. I think it's probably more of a family film, though, um, rather than Karate Kid. You kind of probably watch it more when you're a teenager. I think I didn't watch it till I was in my late teens, early 20s myself. Um, and again, I, I enjoyed it. Pardon? Back to the, you didn't watch Back to the Future? No, so you don't be silly. Oh, right. right. See, so everybody's seen Back to the Future <laughs> when they... <laughs> <laughs> No, the Karate Kid, and I did enjoy it, and I watched all three of them. Um, but um, yeah, I think my love for it has certainly enhanced since Cobra Kai, for sure, for sure. But yeah, we still did the kicks and stuff off the sofas. I think I abs I absolutely loved it, and and it's it's funny because one of my best uh, mates, um, who's an actor like me, um, like we used to when we were like fourteen, fifteen, we always we did like shows together and stuff like that, you know the National Youth Music Theatre and stuff and everything. And we used to do impressions of it then, or we'd sometimes you'd have, cause you'd go off to these like week long rehearsal weeks. And, you know, obviously being from Blackpool, but then I went down to like Harpenden for a week and you stayed in like a boarding school whilst they were on half term. And, uh, you know, we used to spend our lunch times going into the gym and like putting all the mats down and like messing around doing either wrestling moves or like the karate kids, you know what I mean? And we then worked together as adults. And for my birthday, he actually bought me the, the soundtrack of Karate Kid. Sweet. And we'll often send each other like stupid videos. Like I'll just literally like um, WhatsApp him like a voice note and just like go, you're the best. And then he'll go, <laughs> all 
around. <laughs> I then, like it. <laughs> no, or we'll do stuff like I'll just send a video of like my living room or something, and then next minute I'll come past going. <laughs> He's like finds it hilarious. So it's definitely been one for me that I remember as a big film. It was certainly yeah. iconic, that's for sure. Um, including that illegal kick, of course. <laughs> illegal kick. Definitely. When you're saying that. I'm. I'm assuming you're. Are, are you on the Daniels the villain or Johnny's the villain of Karate? Well, kid? this is the big question, isn't it? Who's the real Karate Kid, guys? Who Johnny is the, is the real Karate Kid. The all-American who basically got beat up by a kid who came into town, stole his girlfriend, <laughs> and then stole his stole his title basically. And he wasn't even one one thing that I, I find a grievance with the Cry Kid films, because I'm I such a Johnny Lawrence fan, um, is Daniel wasn't legally eligible to compete in the tournament. He wasn't a black belt. Thank he you. stole a belt. And in Cry Kid 3, when he re-enters the under-18 tournament. He was 18 in the first film. Um, so yeah. surely he's illegal to enter the third one. <laughs> he was 18 so, in the first film. There you go. He had his 18th birthday in the first one, but then still entered and then won a second one. I mean, to be fair, they don't really talk about that one saying he won that tournament anyway. Like he only says he's a, did he say he's a two time national yeah, champion? Yeah, two time. Yeah. yeah, yeah illegal, yeah. illegal kick, illegal win. Overage, <laughs> you can't hit someone Overage. in the face with a kick. Yeah, you've not really got enough evidence there, have you? <laughs> <laughs> Having said that, I am definitely in the. I'm, I, I'm in the. I'm in the Daniel camp. I am, just just because I think like, you know, I, I get it. I do understand why people, say, and especially when you've said all that now, like I understand why people <laughs> see Daniel as the villain. Um, but it's like the the, the scene on the beach when like he full on like uh, breaks the, you know, he, he, like I understand yeah, like yeah. All, all he would have to do is go, listen mate, that's my girlfriend. And then obviously it wouldn't be in that's the black. the end of the film. Anything, would it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Credit oh, that's my girlfriend. And he goes, oh, I'm sorry, misunderstanding. No worries, we can be mates now. But no, like- well, Let's John's talk like... about that beach scene. Who, <laughs> who struck who first? Daniel. Well, it was Daniel, yeah. <laughs> Because I'm imagining he'd heard about Johnny before and he was probably like cacking his pants, wasn't he? Thinking, oh, maybe I should get the first hit in. and Maybe I should strike first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. He, he was destined to be Cobra Kai. Yeah, it's like, like when you have the sorting hat on, he was like, he was supposed to be slivering all along. Oh, nice. <laughs> I like that. He's a little bit Gryffindor. Gr 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 Gryffindor? What, what, what do I call it? Slitherdor. Slitherdor. Yeah, Slitherdor. A little bit Slytherin, a little bit Gryffindor. But I think that's, that's the best thing about Cobra Kai, because it flipped the script and made Johnny seem to be the good guy. Whereas I know there was always like these fan fun theories out there to say Johnny was the real cratty kid. Uh, but Cobra Kai has just confirmed that he is, and he is the, the true hero of the story. Well, it was, what, um, it was really, really Power Met Your Mother, wasn't it, that first introduced That's him. right. Yeah. Yeah. Barney Stinson, yeah. And yeah. that episode is amazing. It's a it brilliant is. episode. It's absolutely brilliant. It I was going to say, um, I, what I love about... Um, what I love about Cobra Kai in, in over the three series is there's always moments where you're right, They and I love that it comes from that angle, especially in the first season, of that angle of going... You know, let's hear Johnny's side of the story. Let's see why we think he's he's the hero and not the villain and stuff. But I also yeah. like that at moments in all the three series, it switches in and out of you going, well, okay, he's, you know, because there are moments when, like Daniel does stuff, and I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Like, you're being an idiot. Like, Oi. get over yourself and get on with it. Yeah. You know, but then there are moments when, like, the Johnny clearly is... Um, being you know the bad guy there as well although like I say essentially it goes from that angle of telling his story and then eventually um Kreese becomes you know the, the main villain doesn't yeah. he really it's the whole thing like Daniel says though and there's no such thing as a bad student only a bad teacher Kreese mm -hmm. is the true villain of Cry Kid Johnny was never the villain in Cry Kid it was always Kreese yeah. Johnny was just unfortunate uh, he was a Cobra Kai at the time and Kreese obviously just turned him evil to kind of beat Daniel, but well, he's, that, that just makes him the hero even more. You see that at the beginning of Karate Kid 2, don't you? When you see right, the yeah. battle park, that's yeah. that moment when you're like, oh, hang on a minute, you know, he's being bullied. Maybe it's not too bad. Yeah, it was It was good. I, I, I love, and I love how, um, I, I always like to sit there and laugh to myself when I'm watching with the moments of Crease when he comes in from sort of season two and he does those... <laughs> 
brilliant sort of like 80s kind of like you know hold hold the frame like those small <laughs> smoldering yeah exactly you always <laughs> hold this and, and <laughs> you pot you stick that in any other series that kind of acting in any other series now and you go oh that's like really like bad dated acting what you're yeah. doing yeah. but obviously he can get away with it because of the style of the piece um, exactly. and yeah. yeah, that's just what makes it so amazing because it shouldn't work and it shouldn't be good Oh. But it is the best TV show on <laughs> at this moment in time. It it's just unreal. I, I just it, love it so much. I think it takes you a moment, doesn't it? Like I know when I first watched the first few episodes and when I told one of my best mates about this as well. And he was like, I was, so I said to him, oh, how was it? How was it? Are you enjoying it? He was like, oh, yeah, it took me like two episodes to understand it. Because I was a bit like, this is a bit rubbish. Yeah. This is like really like dodgy 80s so style acting. It's <laughs> yeah. everything. Yeah. And then he went... And then it just clicked and I got it and then everything fell into place and I go, I get what they're doing now. It's brilliant. Totally. Because totally. it almost it almost takes it almost takes the mick out of itself, doesn't it? And that's why it's so brilliant. Well, like what about when you first heard they were doing it though? Like, were you concerned or was it already out before you even saw it? Were you one of those that watched it on YouTube before it went to Netflix? I'd i I'd never seen it on Netflix. I'd heard about it. And I know you said to me a few times, didn't you, Mercedes? Oh, have you seen Cobra Kai, Cobra Kai. And I know loads of people have mentioned it. I just never got around to watching it because, I mean, I didn't really, I didn't really ever watch anything. I still don't really watch yeah. anything series-wise on um, YouTube. In fact, I think the only sort of um, series I ever watched on YouTube was like a photography competition. That's it. <laughs> so, so I'd heard about it and kind of gone, oh, and. I guess I always just kept hearing about it and forgetting about it. So I never did. And like, so when I heard, as soon as I heard it was coming to Netflix, like it was only within a few days of it coming on that I was like, go. Yeah. Put totally. it on. And I binge watched like the first two series, like in like a day or something. And then I was yeah. like annoyed. <laughs> I remember yeah. when Jamie, you showed me the trailer and I was just was like, what? What? Oh my God. I need this. I need this. And it was just, well, you watched it before me, didn't you? I, like, I watched it. I watched all like series one in six hours. Like I watched it straight all yeah. 10 episodes because I love doing those binges anyway. Like I just love to just sit there and watch TV. Whereas Mercedes isn't a massive fan of doing that at times. <laughs> whereas <laughs> until Cobra Kai series three, when we binged that on New Year's Day. No. But um, yeah, I, I, lo I love just sitting there and just binging a whole TV show. I did it with, that when Veronica Mars announced season four I was like straight in did that <laughs> in a day like I absolutely love just sitting there and just binging it in a day because I'm one of those people that if like it annoys me in the trailer that they show Chris because in series one like he's dead he's not in it and it's just yeah. like that moment when I watched it for the first time and then Chris turns up at the end of series one was like what is gonna insane. what yeah. is happening right now that was like a massive twist and it just gets spoiled because obviously I mean there is two more seasons and he's a massive part of the Karate Kid universe and the Miyagi verse or whatever you want to call it, because we don't talk about the Jaden Smith version. But um, what about Hilary Swank? <laughs> apparently, that that's canon. Apparently, so yeah, that is canon. Yeah. It's Miyagi, isn't it? But I, I haven't watched the next Karate Kid. But um, okay, apparently, with the whole Sam and Tory thing, like that's massive at the moment. There's rumours that maybe Hilary Swank could come into it because it's the whole like. The whole girl fight and maybe Hillary Swamp will come in to give a little bit more of a, a womanly influence to the whole thing because obviously they're both like they both got men as mentors don't they so as yeah. sensei yeah. shall we say sorry but so, um, I'd, be, I'd be up for that anyway because I enjoy Hillary Swank as an actress she's brilliant yeah yeah I think it would be an interesting twist it'd be cool for Daniel to meet another um Miyagi-Do student and yeah have them I'm chat about it have either of you seen so like we talk about Cobra Kai because like they talked um, it, um, Ralph Macchio was asked about doing a, a sort of Karate Kid spin-off series or something for years and years and years, wasn't it? And it wasn't until yeah. the writers of of Cobra Kai came in and he actually went, "Let's do this sort of thing." Yeah. But you do you know that there was um, after the time when the Jaden Smith one came out, there was a I don't know where it is now. I bet you'd be able to find it, but there was a little sort of like short film with um, Ralph Macchio in called Wax On. Boop off, um, <laughs> and it, oh, no, it's really funny. Like it is it like a, it's like a funny or die kind of sketch. It's kind of yeah, and he's he's it's just him a lot older, and it's stuff like you know, he's he's trying to be like they're they're saying like 
you know, you, you don't you, you don't matter anymore. Like you need to be a bad guy or whatever. And he he like tries things to like um to do to like give a bad reputation to sort of you know give a boost to his reputation. And it's stuff like they go, okay, maybe go and sleep with the hooker or something and get caught. And he and basically all he does is is goes, can I just have a hug? <laughs> or they go, okay, be caught in a drug scandal or something. And rather than sort of like you know carding up a line of coke or something he he draws a smiley face in it and stuff like that and then in the scenes where he's up against like um you know you get the billboards on the bus stops yeah and it's the yeah. one of Jaden smith with his leg right up and he basically is like stood right next to it like <laughs> trying to get his leg up this it's really it's it's a it's quite a funny one actually if you can it. find it like i yeah. bet you'd easily be able to find it now but that was that was what i'd seen before that's so cool um I mean, when it first went to go when Cobra Kai first started, seeing Johnny like that, it was like such a fall from great. Yeah. I, I was really surprised. Um, but then it was like it's that classic thing of, um, well, what you expect the school bully to to fall and not have a great life, don't you? And it was that kind of twist that they were doing on it. Whereas Daniel, who was supposed to be the good guy, ended up with his great life and all his money. Well, I said the roles completely reversed. Like yeah. so Johnny was the whole rich spoiled brat, and now Daniel is. I mean. I mean, we have to talk about him. Like Anthony is like the worst character in like oh history of television. I hate him. Like literally, just like, oh, you're gonna steal my veto? I'll just buy another veto. It's like, Alexa, buy a PlayStation veto. It's like, what? It's like, literally, I hate him. He's just. I knew Alexa was gonna start talking to you then. <laughs> Alexa was just gonna <laughs> buy me a veto then. <laughs> oh my god. No, but yeah, I think I think Anthony's kind of one to watch though. Um, from the LaRusso family. Obviously, he's getting older now. Um, and uh, do you think he might want to uh, join, Co- uh, not Cobra Kai, oh my God, Mary Do at some point? I think he shot he up, was. didn't he? From season two yeah. to season three, he shot up, yeah. He's lost a lot of weight as well. Like, yeah. Well, if you look at the actual actor. Stretched out, and he's been sleep sleeping in a, not, not a body bag, but a grow bag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, indeed. Yeah, it was, uh, it was really cool to meet their, uh, their different families. Definitely meeting the LaRusso family, because obviously... Ali was uh, Daniel's big romance in the original, and uh, but I think I think Mrs. Larusso is amazing. Yeah, she's brilliant. What a great character. She has all the best lines for sure. She's great. She does a really, really good job of it. She does. I she does. I one of the f- favorite things with that is like you'll look online, it would be like, yeah, you may hate Daniel or you may hate Johnny or you may hate Miguel or you may hate Hook, but nobody hates Amanda Larusso. <laughs> like literally, yeah. everybody loves her. Like. Everyone's she's probably the most likable character on the whole show, and she's got some of the best lines as well. Yeah, the one, what's it, the one where where um you know Ali does eventually turn up, and 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 Daniel's like, oh, this is Ali, um, and she's like, oh, we're gonna, so have we to need talk. to talk. <laughs> yeah, so, I was so chuffed they did it that way because like you worry that they're gonna be like, oh, I- I'm not gonna like you, you know, because you used to date my husband. But I love that they were like girls together having a good chat. It's a funny one, isn't it? Because like where Cobra Kai takes a lot of the obvious choices that yeah. you're expected to come along with something like that you go oh, it'd be really obvious for them to like just be yeah. like hey each other but they there's there and then there's moments throughout the series where they do that they they lead you down this sort of rabbit hole of going yeah we're going to make the obvious choice and all these like everything you think that could happen and how an 80s movie will go and everything we're going to take it and then every now and then they just throw something in that make that like is completely the opposite and not the uh, obvious choice at all totally. yeah. i love that about it yeah what about when uh, we first meet miguel and you realize okay he is our karate kid this is it we've chosen our star i liked him straight away i think he was absolutely adorable god bless him when you go back and you watch that first episode again his hair's all flat that's all you were talking it. about when we were watching it it's just like look yeah. at his hair his hair's growing he's becoming meaner <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. As he gets, he gets more and more mean. His hair gets bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> it, I guess it does, really, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't. I don't think, for me, at any point, like they ride. They they really ride close to that line with Miguel, and they never ever take him over yeah. to the bad side, really, do they? That, but yeah. they they push it, and they make you think he's going to go there, and he's like wavering, like near yeah, the line. Yeah. He's like on the precipice, like you know, dipping his toe over or whatever, but. They don't fully take him there, do they? No. He had that one, only that one dark moment, really. He had that one dark moment where he decided to just kick Robbie's shoulder and that was it. That was only because of everything that happened, you know, like in the, in in the, the tournament. Yeah. yeah. Should to be, but then, like you said, he, he showed mercy and then he got kicked off the balcony. Spoilers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, like I said, he, he doesn't go over that. Like, he's always been 
true to Johnny and he knew Crease was bad and he was like I like John like Sensei Lawrence has given him everything. So why would he betray him? And then he's always been that kind of moral compass of the show, shall we say? Like to say yeah. he's yeah. never gonna he's never gonna go dark. Um besides obviously like to kick in Robbie, yeah. but you know, Cobra Kai needs to be back on top. Well, he's got that great family foundation and that's how you know he's never going to go like full. And like you say, he is the moral compass. Um, they do do a little bit of harking back to the film though with the beach scene, the party, when he starts the fight because he's drunk. Yeah. And he majorly regrets that. Yeah, because you get to see all that regret on his face. Like said, when yeah. he's making those little videos for Samantha, like, I love oh, you and you. send your octopus and stuff like that. It's just... <laughs> He's just like said, he's and I think one of my favorite bits of series three was I know we've, we've already gone past it when the whole um points of view because one of my favorite things to do is points from a different view, so it's like the Rashomon effect, shall we say, if you're, if you're familiar with that, it's the same story told from different perspectives. And when Miguel finally got to meet Daniel and he sat down and listened to Daniel's side of the story. Then in series one, he listened to Johnny's side of the story and he's had he's had all both aspects of it all. Like he's the only character that's had both sides of the story. So Miguel essentially is like the main character of Cobra Kai. Oh yeah, for sure. Well, he's Eagle like Fang or boss. whatever you want to call it or <laughs> hey, Miyagi Do <laughs> Eagle Fang Karate. <laughs> we're not there yet. Um, <laughs> sticking on series one for now. Um, and again, like um, mirroring the, uh, the original film, um, I love... The, the date scene at golf and stuff. There was only one place they could go. When he's there saying, "Oh, we're gonna, I'm gonna go to the the um the planetarium. We're gonna have chocolates." I was like, "What? No, <laughs> got to go to golf and stuff. It is amazing. Like, if I could go like for anywhere for like a fun night out in the states, that is where I want to go." <laughs> <laughs> Did they have the original music in there at the same time? I can't remember now. I'm trying to think. You know, the... the bam, bam, mm. dun, dun, dun. I think I'm it might have been a little like bit in the background. Yeah. <laughs> like, is that, do you know which one I mean? Do they, I can't I know remember what you mean. That yeah. in the background. That, that's the thing that it does so well, though, doesn't it? It just... It's, it's made by the fans for the fans. Oh, and yeah. there's so much... Um, homage to the actual film like I said when they're looking back at some of the scenes and recreating them or homaging them like the bit where they come out in the whole like skeleton Halloween outfit is just amazing Aww. like when they bring that or when he's got the red leather jacket that Johnny wore when Miguel yeah. gets to borrow that it's just like little moments like that is what makes the show incredible and like I said it's for the fans made by fans who actually love it it's not just a job to them just to be like oh yeah, i'm just writing this tv show i'm going to do it like they actually love karate kid and yeah, they want to make this amazing show and they want to homage it as much as they can and they got the original people like the mum came back in an episode oh yeah that was brilliant karate kid like they've got everybody back from like the original film that that they could obviously pat mariotta couldn't couldn't obviously i'm sure yeah. he probably would and they got the original gang Don't back. Talk about that yet? We're not talking about that yet. <laughs> we'll get to that in a minute. We will get to that in a minute because that is amazing. Um, but let's just talk about meeting our other characters in in season one. Um, when when it started, who who struck you straight away? Like who was a who was a good character apart from Daniel and Johnny? Who was my favorite character straight away? Yeah. Well. Obviously, Lip, or whatever you want to call him, when he was first on there, wasn't that much Eli. He wasn't just... Obviously, his development later on, obviously, into Hawk was incredible. But um, Dimitri was pretty funny. Um, Obviously, he was a little bit annoying at times. But I know this is Series 2, but you were talking about character entries. My favourite character in the whole series is Stingray. I absolutely love him. (laughs) But you're talking about who's your favourite character from first point. Like, Stingray is amazing. In season one. But, um, okay, season one characters. See what I'm going to go for him just, just for fun because like he had some of the great great lines and stuff. I'm going to go for Daniel's cousin because he's just great. <laughs> he's so <laughs> stupid, but I love it. He's just amazing. Idiot. Oh, my yeah, God. Like, and obviously he's without so him, like, you, yeah, as a, without him, you couldn't progress the story into what it was. And then we had episode no. nine, which was one of the, my favourite episodes where Daniel and Johnny got to actually be together in a car and got to speak and realise they are pretty much the same person kind of thing, like they enjoy the same music. And 
it's just unfortunate that they couldn't be friends because of Ali. Like they probably would have been really, really good friends. Totally. But... That moment in the car and they go to the bar and like those little connections when they started happening, you're just like, oh my God, oh my God, are they going to be friends? Are they going to be friends? Yeah, they and totally, then... they, the writers totally send us on a Ross and Rachel journey with Johnny. <laughs> 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 Johnny and, da- and Daniel are the Ross and Rachel of Cobra Kai. Yeah, 100%. It all just keeps coming crashing down every time. But I love it. I say, like, for me, like, yeah, I reckon uh, Hawk's transformation was quite a cool moment in, oh. in season one. Like, just to go from that, you know, I don't know. I don't know if I remember, like, thinking, is this coming now? Like, why are they teasing and pushing this guy so much? There's got to be a purpose to it. Like, yeah. and then obviously he has his transformation, and you go, okay. That's quite cool. When That's he walked cool. in. You know, and he kind of becomes, cool. at the time you're going, oh, is he going to be the Mike Barnes of like Cobra Kai sort of thing, you know? Yeah. Um, I remember thinking that about him. I was going, okay, yeah, that's a little nod to like Mike Barnes, like the bad boy. Um, cause it, and, it, and it was like, he didn't just like slowly transition, did he? It was yeah. like literally... It's basically, you know, I'm on the spectrum. Is like, I don't know what that is, but get off yeah, it. And, off it real quick. <laughs> and a leaves yeah. and all of a sudden he's just back with a massive mohawk out of it's nowhere. Like, <laughs> it's like he made this. He was like, look, this is where my life is. I can either carry on, you know, being pushed around and everything, or I can just flip the switch, like as that. he said, and just start again. And that's exactly what he did. It was amazing. And what's quite interesting there is the parallels between um, him and... Um, Oh, the other one you mentioned it before. Why have I forgotten his name? Miguel. Dimitri, Miguel, Dimitri, Dimitri, Dimitri. 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 yeah, they because they have that both. They're like the bullied, like geeks or whatever, don't they? And they have that split yeah. of going, yeah. you know, like Eli comes out and becomes Hawk, and then um, Dimitri kind of just goes off and still stays in his shell. And even like you know, those moments when he is training, like he's just a bit pathetic. And they, and yeah. and actually, if anything, that accentuates more uh, the journey and the, and the arc that Eli goes on to become Hawk sure and what a journey he has over the three series <laughs> it's a big old arc isn't it like i mean you they oh. you have mini arcs per season with him but actually when you look at it over the three seasons there's a big old arc so is there going to be more if you know when when season four happens is that arc going to continue even more it's it's not going to happen so. but I'd, I'd love him to go all the way and win the or valley but i don't think it's going to happen like i think like, how, how great would it be for his character to just win it all like he's the one who saves Johnny's um, dojo, but I don't think it's going to happen. It's good. the way it's written at the moment. It seems like Miguel's going to have his magical transformation and come back and win it all, isn't it? But again, we're not there yet. Well, but, yeah. I'm, hoping, I'm hoping for another kind of another kind of uh, progression there. But um, what that moment then when um, at the All Valley, you know, when you've got Sam and not Sam, but you've got Robbie and uh, and Miguel fighting each other. And you're like, well, this is it. This is the All Valley. This is the big thing. Where are we going to go from here after it? Daniel LaRusso is going to coach. <laughs> yeah, Daniel LaRusso is going to coach. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and when he does that, what a tease. Was that? <laughs> yeah, I remember that being a good, a good moment. And it, actually, when you still watch the film to this day, like that, that moment, you know, obviously, like, let's just take aside... The, the crane kick and whatever but that moment of the clap in the hands like again that was something that I used to imitate as a kid yeah. and it's a little bit like I know I'm going way off topic, topic here but it's a little bit like if you watch Rocky 4 and and they're going through that the final fight and the huge fight and he gets that one punch in that um that breaks him and and you get the commentary from the bo- uh, the boxing commentators going he's caught the Russian is bleeding and that moment and the and the, the the music building up and you just go oh yes God go go like and it's the same it's a little bit like that you get that sort of wave of like oh something magic is going to happen yeah. when he goes you know, claps his hands together and rubs so when they brought that back in a series I was like yes. Brilliant. Those moments, like that's why I love sports films, like Mighty Dogs and everything else like that. Is those moments at the end when like the heroes are like are down, and you have those moments, and then yeah, yeah. they come back. Oh, but, um, Mercedes yeah. only watched Rocky one, so she hasn't watched them. Yeah, before. no, I haven't seen but, that. But we, we, we can't talk about Rocky four without probably one of the greatest lines ever, which is, "If he dies, he dies." <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, right. Listen. Also, skip five. If you do watch them, okay. skip five. <laughs> that's not worth Surely it. Surely noted. If you yeah. and then go on to Rocky Balboa, so go from four to Rocky Balboa. 
which okay. is the one and cre- I, I love i think creed's like incredible as well i know we're going completely yeah, off the topic, creed films but are creed, i prefer creed to rocky I Do think they're really? unreal. Yeah, they're amazing. Yeah. Like the Creed films. I mean, I think that's like the, the the advancement of how sports films are shot and the realism and yeah. stuff and everything, and that that makes it well. Yeah. In, in a way, in a way, it is comparable to um, the the Rocky Balboa film, which is where they go, oh, could the champ now beat the champ from yesteryear? And it's a, it's a similar kind of way. Like they were, it was a brilliant, brilliant film of its time. But like the way it's shot now with Creed and stuff is, you know. It's yeah. like the new champ and the old champ, isn't it? It's like who would win in a fight? Would Johnny or Miguel win in a fight now? Johnny and Miguel fighting each other? I don't want to see that. No, I said it. No, I said it. it's kind of the same with Rocky and Creed, isn't it? Like you said, I'm he's still, got the new I'm champ still, and the former champ. Would you say Johnny in his say, yeah, Johnny in his prime or Miguel? Because oh, Miguel's right, okay. been with taught by prime. Miguel's been taught by Johnny, but Johnny's been taught by Chris, so Yeah, but yeah, but Miguel's had a bit of crease thrown in there as well. I don't think Johnny would ever go back to, you know, crease mm. ways. Talking of that moment when he walks in at the very end of season one. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. I both did it at the same time. <laughs> Uh, it's just so I, iconic that though, isn't it? That like, nobody else does this, but that is. <laughs> <laughs> it's just his character perfectly just sewn up in just one stance. It's it's interesting because it, it's an interesting choice to make of like because like you wouldn't necessarily naturally stand like that and as an actor to make certain choices that are wrong is and if you if you do that you've got to go for it and you've got to go for it in a way someone who does that is um, Christopher Waltz like if you've seen um, Inglorious Bastards that moment where um, I think it's from the very... No, is it from the very first scene? He does something where he points down to his tone. He just goes... And I, that's like yeah. such a bad choice to make for any other actor. But the fact that he did it and he went with it was just... You just go, how can you make such a bad choice look so good? <laughs> and it's the same thing with with um, Chris when he does this. It's it's so iconic to him. Like, anyone does that, you know exactly what they're doing. But man... <laughs> He is a scary dude. You just do not trust him at all. When he came back and then and then Johnny's like, he doesn't trust him at first. And then he decides to, and everyone's just screaming at the TV, no, Johnny. <laughs> and my friend at work, she was she was watching it after a course. I'd seen all of it. And she'd just text me every now and again. It'd just be like this like little commentary. And I knew exactly what's going on and where she's up to. And she's like, no, no, don't trust him, Johnny. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> I mean, their fight at the beginning of the season two between Johnny and Crease was great as well. Like you said, throwing him into the, the mirrors and it was just a brutal, wasn't it? Because, I mean, going on later as well, I think Crease has had some brilliant fights. Like the one at the end of season three was amazing yeah. as well. Yeah. But yeah. I just, I'd love to just see Crease get, get on the mats and just have a massive fight. Like, uh, an under seventies tournament, shall we say? I don't know how old he is, but you know, uh, you know, like the adult tournament, like you know, they have like senior football and stuff like that. You know, yeah. have a senior competition. And we can finally get like Rocky free, free, like Rocky free, free frame between Daniel and Johnny at the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's yeah. actually going to win. Yeah, the says I have no idea what we're talking about there, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> you kind of love that you're hating him, though, don't you? Oh, yeah. I mean, you do hate him, but you kind of love it as well. And that annoys you even more. <laughs> yeah, well, it makes Johnny look even better, which is what I like. And the bits when, you know, um, Chris is coming along and he's then starting to mentor the kids and Johnny's just like, uh, it's not quite. But the thing is, Johnny was pretty, you know, kind of a dick when he first started mentoring them, you know, calling them lip and all sorts. And then Chris comes in and starts being a dick and he's like, Oh yeah, no, don't don't do that. That's not how we do it here. And you can see how he's progressed. Yeah, but he's still stuck in those mm-hmm. old ways. Um, well, that's because like all the stuff that he's like when you talk about him, sort of like teach, uh, sort of um, mentoring and like sent being their sensei at the beginning. Like he's going on what he knows, and, yeah, totally. and he's never known anything but doing that with Crease. So when he's when he's going through all these um, classes and the amount of time that passes by over the series up until those points, like he's finding out what he is as a sensei by by like naturally, obviously, because he's a better person than Cree. So he's sort of like slowly sanding away those sort of like bad habits and bad ways of teaching and stuff, isn't he? So like you say, like and that has to happen for him so that when they get to those moments where he's like, whoa, whoa, 
you can't do that. Like if, if he just carried on as he was, then it's, you know, it's not going to go anywhere then, is it? Cause he's going to go, yeah, let him do this. Let him do that. Don't care. <laughs> exactly. He definitely learns from Miguel and, you know, and grows through that. And uh, it's Miguel one of the best playing... relationships of the show though, isn't oh. it, Miguel and Johnny? Well, it's like Johnny, Johnny is in need of a son. Miguel is in need of a father. And it's that, it's that classic one. And it's there. Uh, it's yeah, it's a really good relationship. It's really I just love the whole, um, yeah. I showed you the, the picture, like we had the whole Cobra Kai memes and it's basically like Johnny when Miguel needs help and he's just like straight there, like going to do anything. But then when Robbie needs help, he's just like, well, I've got some other stuff that I need to do. <laughs> 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 and that's his actual son. But yeah. yeah. But, oh, Robbie. Yeah. Let's talk about Robbie. You don't even mention Robbie, really. Oh, bless him. He was a, yeah, he was lost. But then he found Daniel. Then he found Chris. <laughs> and he yeah, found he everyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I mean, the, the big thing about it is, so um, Samantha kind of made him a little bit good, but he still had that dark side in him because obviously he's had a a pretty crappy life, hasn't he? But um, I think Daniel made him good, you know, anyway, without Samantha. Yeah, but... She may have helped. Yeah, but it's, it's the same with with Daniel though isn't it like Daniel was kind of like rough and kind of like bad yeah, and then yeah. Miyag- and Miyagi made him a little bit good what, what happens with Robbie next is I don't know whether he's going to have his hawk moment and turn back to the, the the light side or I don't think he is I don't I, I even don't see him on a side really because although he went you know when he was the representative for Miyagdo and everything He's like, he's constantly wait. He's on the edge for a reason, like because my personal opinion, I, I don't, and you know, I may be proved wrong, um, mm-hmm. but we talked about Miguel having that, um, having that sort of like those moments of wavering towards the dark side and and sort of easing off and whatever. I think for me, like Robbie's there because I think yeah. with him, although he's been sort of uh, mentored by Daniel and stuff like that, and he's and he's obviously been softened a little bit by Samantha like I think he has those moments of when he can switch and like like completely like snap to the other side you know for example the moment at the end of um uh, of season two like I know he regrets it straight away um but he he had that moment where he just completely loses control doesn't he and I think they're gonna he's never gonna be like bad 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 side but he's never gonna be good 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 side I don't think no, I think yeah. when he flips, it's a lot worse than when Miguel flips. Miguel have, will have a little moment, but when when Robbie flips, it's dangerous. Mm. Which we see. <laughs> yeah. um, but, but it's like you said, um, with with Robbie, he I can't remember what I was going to say now. Um, again, it's like he's a bit, you know, a bit a bit like a bit like Anakin, you know. I'd I'd say. <laughs> yeah, 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 true. I can't know what I was going to say. Sorry, I, you keep talking. I'm just going to try. My, and I, 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 gonna say I, that, yeah, I cut you off, didn't I? Okay. No, we'll, uh, no, we'll, we'll, we'll let you think about. We'll let you think about. We'll let you think about. Yeah. While you're thinking, while you're thinking, um, let's talk about the entry of Tori with a Y. Badass. I, I I really liked that. Um, that they have Samantha and they have Tori and they have the female. Um, uh, fighters in this and and we get further on into season three we want to talk about it there's more then isn't there that quite badass and i like that because what they're now doing is is they're going okay if we've got a new generation of you know potential karate kids slash um cobra kai fans like we don't want it to just be about you know because when when the original was made it was in the day of like you know yeah. The, the guys are the tough ones and the girls are the whole, like, oh, save me. And, you know, and a, and, a, and a strong woman back in the 80s was someone who, you know, could mouth off a little bit, but that was it. Like, you know, yeah. and I, I, I honestly like that, um, that now uh, these female characters can become inspirations and, and have a reason for uh, girls to watch a show and, and go, oh, that's so cool. I'd love to be like, you know, I'd love to be badass because you tell me, Mercedes, if you were watching shows like like if the Karate Kid actually had female yeah, fighters yeah. in them in the original films, like how much more would you have loved them? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, like I love Cobra Kai anyway, but the fact that you know, I I, I kind of liked Sam, but she was also a little bit soppy and a bit wet sometimes. Yeah, and then Tori came <laughs> in and was just like, 
badass and it's like you've got those two completely polar opposites and they're kind of you know probably both sides of me and both sides of a lot of girls we've all got both of those sides so how so to have them and you know battling it out like you probably battle it out within yourself you know a lot um is really really cool it's nice for I think Sam probably secretly enjoys it Mary Mouse the actress herself she probably loves it that she's got someone to bounce off like that that they're every time they interact together I always think it's brilliant yeah, yeah, and I think it's it's the main like rivalry in the show at the moment, isn't it? Yeah. Like, it, especially in series three. Um, again, we'll probably go on to it later, but it makes sense for that to be the final of the Old Valley. But I don't yeah. think it's gonna happen. Yeah. But the way That's the right. story's going, I could see that happening. Like that, they're gonna be like the final two, or they're gonna because again, like women are still uh, like women are still in that in that tournament Aisha was in it in series one wasn't she yeah. so they're gonna have to compete in the same tournament that like, there's not a separate women's one yeah. it's not just a men's it's it's just under 18 so they're gonna have to compete somehow like against each other so whether they actually get there I don't know it's, it's going to be very interesting what's going to happen in series four when they eventually release it hopefully New Year's Day hopefully New Year's Day we can binge it again <laughs> <laughs> But no, like, Tori's amazing. Like Peyton List, the actress, is just like, con- considering she's like a Disney girl, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I remember when it first came out and was looking at like all the actors on Instagram and it's like, oh, I got about 18,000 followers, 10,000 followers, like like Miguel and Eli, like Jacob Bertrand and Sholo. And, uh, and then you get Peyton List, who's got 18 million followers on Instagram. It's just absolutely yeah. unreal. Uh, because obviously she's Disney, so she, she's probably also a like reason shows. why she was hired. I mean, I'm like, yeah, yeah. Amy reason, obviously, like, because that's that's just the way it is now. If you can hire someone in that's like gone in and done a brilliant sort of um, uh, screen test yeah. and everything, and then they go, oh, by the way, they've got a massive following of potentially young kids. Well, yeah, that can yeah, come Disney. on to Cobra Kai. I mean, you know? they've already got like the old, well, we're like the older audience now. Yeah. But since bring her in, you know, that's bringing in that younger audience because I'm like, oh, what's she doing now? Let's go watch this. Well, they're doing well, like him. Having said that, sorry, oh, having sorry. said that, like, <laughs> maybe kids don't want to watch it because I'm yeah, just maybe not... some of the stuff. <laughs> yeah, not too younger kids. <laughs> no, well, like I said, they're doing a remake of, um, what's the film called? Um, I'm got a couple of, She's yeah. All That. They're doing a remake of oh, She's um... All That. Um, you know the Freddie Prince Jr. film, but they're reversing it because you know everything has to get reversed now. So it's basically he's all that, and it's it's relevant. Don't worry, but um, okay. that's actually starring Tana Buchanan, oh, who right. plays Robbie. Yeah. So nice. Robbie's the kind of like, well, basically this this girl is the main character, and she's going to be basically <laughs> have, have have the task to turn Tana Buchanan into like prom king that's what right, the whole okay. film's so about difficult but, the, but, the, but the but the actress in it again she's like a massive tiktok star with 50 million followers on it so you know let's give it to her yeah. <laughs> um it's just one of those things in it you've got the following you can just basically just get them in yeah. there by their name because you know people are going to watch it crazy two things on that for me is one will they still keep the hat key sack moment in it <laughs> <laughs> what i don't think mercedes has watched that have you um, once many, many years ago. Okay. I remember that just being the weirdest moment in the film. But <laughs> and 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 second point, interesting that you say she's a TikTok star. Is she actually an actress or is she just a TikTok star? Just TikTok uh, online because, personality, like, I believe. I remember when I've taught um drama to kids before and I and I've gone around playing, I'm sure you guys will have played it. Um, the, the actor's name game. So you sit in a circle and you do like someone starts with an actor and it like says uh, Tanabe Cannon. So the next person has to start with an actor whose first name begins with B. And yeah, you go yeah. around the circle. And if there's a double name, like, you know, um, Steven Seagal or whatever, and then it, then it goes back around the other way. And we were playing this game and like loads of them were just saying um, names. So I was like, who's that? They're like, oh, they're from Tawi or they're from. And I went, no, 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 they're not actors. They're, they're reality TV. Oh, I didn't even God. want to say stuff. They're personalities, aren't they? People. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. it's interesting that kids these days now would see like people like that as a 
You can just become famous just like just like that, can't you? Yeah. I mean, this this person I've just I've just looked at her, uh, Addison Ray. She's called. This is going to be her first film. It's going to be a proper oh on-screen debut. But she's got sixty-one million followers on TikTok, the wow. second most followed individual on the platform. That's crazy. Wow. <laughs> just just off making short really little videos TikTok on TikTok is, is just. Like it's I basically mean, like, do you remember when I did dub smash? It's basically like that to a degree. Yeah, yeah I know. Videos. I get the idea, but I don't yeah. fully know, and I don't want to know. I'm not. There is some. There is some yeah. creative fun on TikTok and everything, and I am on it. But like, I mean, I don't even remember the last one that I did, and I've not done it because <laughs> I kind of went, oh, I'll give it a go, and then I kind of went, Meh. yeah, yeah. Um, Born in it. But like, interesting, <laughs> and and you know what? Listen, I say because I've worked with youtube stars before i worked with joe sug and you know the initial sort of like feeling of him coming into the show that i was doing was oh well why is a youtube star taking the job of you know someone that could that's trained for it over years and years and years and stuff actually joe did a very very he very was very job. very good because we, we, we came and saw him oh, did you was it was yeah he did such a brilliant job and he, and he went from when he first started to when he eventually left he progressed so much and he was he was great to start with and he was you know there was no status with him in that show he was um he was very much um uh you know humble and he was like oh guys like i'm struggling with this bit like can you help me with something or like he wasn't like just i'm a youtube star like i mean so it'd be interesting to see what this tiktok girl does and if she can act so yeah. you know who knows she may be she may be good she might have done a screen test and the producers have gone actually yeah she's good enough um but the jury's out <laughs> Yeah, it's just weird as well, because like you said, with him, it's such a big role to go into as well. I know it's not obviously the main character, but like for Christopher Fitzgerald played him in the Broadway show, didn't he? You know, from like Puck from Wicked, and uh, he was following on from Neil from In Between Us. Sorry, I forgot his name. Right, yeah, and yeah. Then, uh, like... Yeah, and then obviously it was Jack McBride before that as well. So it's like not like just like just coming into a role just blank. He's actually following in and. Yeah. I thought he was amazing. Like I didn't really expect much from him, and he, he was really, really good in the role. Yeah, yeah. Same. Same. So we'll anyway, that, that's a yeah, that's but, completely off topic. Digress. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I nearly went back on the topic. <laughs> um, okay, well, let's. Why don't we give Jamie the opportunity to talk about his favorite character of all time? Oh, okay, go on. My favorite because Stingray series two. Stingray. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love him. Like the annoying thing is, like I, I've. I said it uh, after I finished Series 3. I said Series 3 was amazing, but, you know, probably need a little bit of Stingray in there. Like, Paul Watt House is probably my favourite actor from, like, 2019. Like, Richard Jewell was incredible. He did Cobra Kai as well, and it was just... It was just what phenomenal. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I, I just love him as a character. It's just it's just stupid. It's a grown man just hanging around with kids doing about karate. And but it works. The... the, 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 the <laughs> The fight scene at the school at the end where he just comes in, he's just like trying to get a job as a security <laughs> guard. And all of a sudden he just starts beating up all these kids. It's just amazing. I think he's a classic sort of um like comic relief within, you know, when when things can get too not that it ever gets serious, serious in Cobra Kai, but like if it can get a little bit too like, we're gonna absolutely kick them, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna like we're gonna kill them or whatever, like and he just provides those split moments of that yeah. sort of like comic relief in between those moments, just to sort of balance it out and you know, not get you a bit too like like my god, tense, like what is gonna happen? And he just breaks those moments and he does it. He does it brilliantly. Yeah, it's like yeah. in the um, the creek, like that, that's yeah, one of my favorites, say. where they say where it's the team red versus team black. <laughs> yes. And it's actually so serious that moment, like we're gonna yes. we're gonna win. And it's that you've got like the the Medal of Honor and stuff, and it's Hawk versus Miguel, uh, which is kind of like the whole thing of like Team Johnny versus Team Grease. And then uh, also it's like, Team Red win! And all of a sudden it just comes <laughs> up going, the best thing about Stingrays is we just lie in wait. <laughs> and just everyone's just like, oh my God, yeah, that's, that's like one of my favorite moment. moments. <laughs> that's, that, brilliant moment. that's exactly that. It completely breaks that tension of like two friends when they realize and they're like beginning to not like <laughs> each other, and then suddenly, wait, it's Stingrays here. Yeah, it is a great <laughs> moment. And like so in the serious the seriousness between Tori and Sam as well, when they're having that drinking competition on the stools, and he's just there with his like two <laughs> bottles, like duct tape to his hands and he's just like that, you can't cheer for her that's <laughs> so that's so how I met mother as well isn't it oh my well, God. i don't know if it's directly from that but what there, there's a there's an episode of how i met your mother where they do that and they call it something no hands i can't remember what it's called now uh, um, it's been ages since i watched how i met your mother yeah, yeah. But it, i'm yeah. sure we're gonna re-watch it again because it's going on disney plus soon 
Is it really? Oh, when yeah. it when Star plays. Stars. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah. Cool. Oh. No, it is a good moment. He does he does such a good job of, of providing that sort of comic relief in the moments where it could be a little bit too much, and and not only serious within um, like the, the the scene and and what's going on within their world, but you know it, it does a great job of breaking up just the moment of going. By the way, you're watching Cobra Kai. You're not yeah. watching. Mm-hmm. You're not watching. You know, like. Um, something that's mega serious and like you know Rambo you're first blood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're not watching Vikings. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. What's that, yeah. One? What's that suicide teen one. Yeah, you're not watching. Thirteen that. reasons why. Yeah, 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 exactly. yeah. <laughs> exactly. He, he that, does it, that is very serious. <laughs> yeah, he does it in in those in that sort of like double way of of providing comic relief for us as viewers, but also yeah. prom- yeah. Like providing comic relief just to go, let you know that you are watching a show that's kind of still taking the mick out of itself. <laughs> Totally. Talking about that party where they're, where they're drinking, um, Hawk and, uh, and Dimitri or Eli and Dimitri have a little moment there as well. Yeah. Where you almost, you almost comes back to us. Yeah. Because we... it's all because of Doctor Who, isn't it? They're all yeah. like, so what, what's the new Doctor like? And it's all like, it's a she. And he's all like, there's a woman <gasps> Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> because he's just trying so hard not to be a geek anymore. And then all of a sudden it's just like, you have that moment where it's like, He's not all turned. He's not yeah. all gone. There's still hope there. He still wants to, you know, be the person he was, but he can't because he's got to be Hawk. Yeah, I think he's he's constantly having that internal fight with himself, isn't he? I think he's he's when he made the switch, like it was constantly just to prove that he can look after himself, that he can, yeah. you know, he's not going to get kicked around and stuff. And he's there's that internal fight that he's having with himself of going, can I be my normal self, but you know, but still be able to you know um look after myself like w- w- with regards to fighting um and he's constantly battling that yeah and more and more so as the series go on exactly and he's like i think he realizes as well because he really he lost moon because of it. He, he, get, he got moon because you know he was being all cool but then when he started to be a bully he lost her and he recognizes that so it's really sad i mean to be fair if you're talking about like badass hawk like that fight that I had with the big bully from series one at the in series three, you know, when they started bringing in a new class oh, under yeah, creases God. and you've got the big guy and he's all Hawks like, no, I'm going to, I've got this guy and he's just proper just bashing into him whilst he's on the ground. It was just like, he had so many dark moments in series three. You're thinking this is unredeemable. Yeah. Then obviously with Dimitri and his arm, it was just, that you moment. didn't think he was going to come back from it. Yeah, no. That moment um, was when I thought we'd lost him forever. Really, did. but you still saw on his face the regret that yeah. he didn't want to do it, but he had to do it. Yeah, it wasn't just like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna break it out of spite. It was like, oh no, like I need to look cool in front of my friends here. I need to do that. Uh, I don't want to. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And then he did it. But yeah. was that moment bef- before or after he has the fight with the guy who beat him up in season one? I think that's before. Before the arm yeah. break, the, the arm break after. I think. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say like that. That might be a, a pivotal moment for him in his in in part of his arc. Is that kind of, you know, that was the reason why he turned was because he got beat up by that guy, and now yeah. the tables are turned and he's beat up that guy. Is that him going? Is that a little bit of redemption for him that allows yeah. that sort of light yeah. light leak of um of of goodness to shine on him. <laughs> Well, yeah. you see his face when he walks into the dojo. He's like, "Shit, this isn't yeah. this isn't my dojo anymore. This isn't me and my friends. But we've come to be safe and get away from them. And now they're here. The our sensei has let them in. He's let the wolves in. And you can see he's scared in that moment. He goes back to Eli. Yeah, sad. But like you say, he he beats him up anyway. So." That was absolutely brutal though as well, weren't it? That was like a moment where I was just like, this is going to go really dark now. Yeah. Luckily, they didn't show him because like, if they did that something, that's going to be like a 15 or uh, you know, a little bit more brutal. They need to keep it more family orientated, don't they? But Hawk has been the best character arc throughout from series one to series three. Like he's been the best character development, I think. And it's something that doesn't usually happen in... Well, he's a the lot one of shows. We're talking about, you know, um, in, in season two and at the end of season two and that gap where we were waiting for season three, it's like, are we going to get Hawk's redemption? Is he going to come back to the light? And that was the big, the big thing for season three for me was Hawk's redemption. 
and uh, it was a beautiful moment. But I don't want to talk about that just yet. <laughs> just want <laughs> to have a little chat got- about that scene, uh, that that whole episode where they're in the bar uh, with the girls, as in Johnny. The Mexican Paul, restaurant. The Mexican restaurant. <laughs> the said, episode nine. On. The episode nine where they almost come together and become friends. Every time. Uh, same as series one, series two, they had that moment. It was just like, this is it. Like Johnny's dancing and eating Mexican food. And then Amanda comes up with a whole like great line. It's just like, oh yeah, it's fine. You just have rival jo- dojos. <laughs> it's, like, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> uh, to just oh, like I said, she, she just like, just puts it into simple terms. And when you fit, put it into simple terms, it just sounds so stupid. Exactly. But it's like, this is like their life. <laughs> yeah. It's that and it's reminder just again that you're watching the show and that it's like, and it's just boys being... Yeah, yeah they, just got, they just got rival. <laughs> I just got rival dojos. <laughs> They're just still teenagers at heart. Um, but there's that, that thing where, um, you know, they're like, oh, are you sure you don't want to write that down? And uh, they have the look at each other like, yeah, okay. And then she gets it wrong, the... the um, Waitress, the food, the waitress, yeah. yeah, and um, yeah, that's what brings them together, strangely. Bless them yeah, again, because like I said in series one, episode nine, um, which obviously mirrors that, they have so many moments where they are the exact same, that they have so much in common, yeah, that they could be friends, but because of what happened in high school, they can't be friends, yeah, but they are so much alike, oh, yeah. Like, it's going to be interesting, the dynamic in Series 4, which we'll get to eventually, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think as well, like, what's interesting is, is you, like, they, they can't let it go, can they? And it'd be, yeah. it'd be interesting to see why, because a lot of time has passed. Like, what are we talking in that universe? Like, what is it, 25, 30 years? Yeah. Like so, that. like, I mean, it'd be, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how they do it, but it'd be interesting to see that period of when uh, you know when they sort of part ways at high school up until like when they see each other again in in um Cobra Kai like what's making them hold on to that like because you know I've had arguments and and not got on well with people that I went to college with and you know I look back now and I go it's so silly and I've worked with them since and I've said to them on the first day look we obviously didn't get on at college or whatever like let's just start anew like forgive yeah, and forget yeah. sort of thing or whatever and, and then it's been absolutely fine but what is what with them is making them hold on to it so much that the thing is, is down the line. With, with this college per with this college person though did he illegally kick you in the head in a classic <laughs> it was a she <laughs> it, it, it was a she <laughs> was a she illegally kick you in the head in a karate tour <laughs> yes yes she did. Um, <laughs> but, yeah it's just it'd be interesting to see like what what sort of for, for either of them I think it's obvious for Johnny isn't it because he, he sort of found that as his his downfall that moment his life suddenly went from going uphill to suddenly like just crashing you know and that's where we pick up with him in um in in season one when he's absolutely down and out as an adult and trying to hold on to his life in the 80s as a teen but what 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 with Daniel, like surely he won it. He he got the one up over him. He had the yeah. better life. Like you said earlier, Jamie, like he became the rich, uh, spoiled kid and everything. Like surely he'd be able to let it go. I, f- well, I think when the they thing first with... meet, though, he, he, he sort of, he is like that. He's kind of like, oh, Johnny, you know, we got, you know, he's kind of like cool about it. Like, I so, could oh, just yeah, face. we had a rivalry <laughs> in school, but it's fine now. And Johnny's still like, no, it's not fine. And then, <laughs> and then they do, fall out of hard no, weapons. I, I, no, I, I think the whole thing with Daniel, it's not just Johnny, it's Cobra Kai. That's what he has the yeah. issue with. Yeah, but yeah. Because Johnny opened Cobra Kai, that's why he has the issue with Johnny, because he was their star pupil. Yeah. I think, like, Daniel's issue was Cobra Kai. Like, if he didn't open Cobra Kai, I'm sure there would be no issue there. And like you said, he was kind of, like, trying to joke and have a banter with him, but obviously yeah. Johnny wasn't having that because his life has been ruined since since high school because of that moment. Yeah. Uh, like I said, he 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 went out. He slept with Robbie's mom. Obviously, got pregnant. Didn't go to the birth, and just basically became what well, I don't even know what his job was. He was basically like a 
Handing them the, fit, fitting TVs on the wrong side of the wall, apparently. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, again, that moment in series two where he's trying to date and that woman comes back. Oh, yeah, that's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> that I, said, brilliant. I didn't call you a bitch. I said you were bitching at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, brilliant. True. <laughs> um, one last thing from season two. Um, I think for me, my favourite favorite thing about season two is when the Cobras get back together. Um, oh, the fight. Yeah, we'll get the fight. <laughs> oh, Hans Gruber. <laughs> yeah, that was very Hans Gruber. You know, the Cobras, one last ride, you know, um, and they're doing all the flashbacks when they're on the bikes. And oh my God, the fact that they got all the same guys back, brilliant. And yeah. they literally put him <laughs> in a body bag. Yeah. <laughs> and and, and um, that actor like died not long after filming, yes, didn't he? He did. Oh my god, that was so sad, but but really poignant as well. It was very strange. That must but, have been yeah. that must have been really cool for them because, like, as a as a young actor, like having that time in their lives, they must have shot it over a summer and having that time together yeah. and having so much fun. They must have formed so much of a bond. And 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 think of like potentially stronger than what sort of Ralph Macchio and William Zabka have now because they they are like really good friends, aren't they? Like yeah. mm -hmm. when you do that and you, and you build that kind of a friendship um, as a younger person and then down the line, like, you know, like you say, 25, 30 years later to come back and, and have that time together must've been really special for them. It yeah, must've been really cool. Being the kids again, doing the, doing the things that they were doing. Like that the bar fight was great. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That was amazing. Bless them. But yeah, it was I'm, really special. I'm just going to go slightly off topic. It's still Cobra Kai, but uh, it just came to me as well that, like, the whole fun fact with Cobra Kai is Daniel is technically, like, Ralph Macchio is one year older or two years older than Pat Mariotta was when he did Karate Kid, yeah, that's which right. is absolutely crazy to think yeah, about. Like, still looks you always like expect Mr. Miyagi is, yeah, like, you expect Mr. Miyagi to be, like, 60 or 70 or something like that. And, yeah. like, Ralph Macchio was just, like, has an age. He just looked really of... old, didn't he? Like, <laughs> yeah. and, like, it's a little bit like, what's her name? Um, uh, Maggie Smith, like... Uh, oh, Jennifer watched, Lopez, she I never watched, ages. She <laughs> doesn't age anyway, but like Maggie Smith, like I remember in Hook being like, just, I remember as a kid watching that and going like, she's like, must be like 120 or something. And like, <laughs> and, and she's then even when she looked like just as old as McGonagall and like, well, she's still here now. I don't want her to go like that. I'm not complaining yeah. about that. Like mm -hmm. she's a brilliant actress, but you go like, she looked ancient then. Like, how yeah. old was she? Like, in Sister Act, like when she was in, in Sister Act, like I was just like, oh my god, yeah, she's a really old nun. That's why she's like the mother superior. Yeah, <laughs> but now like, she's, she's just been old for like half a century, hasn't she? <laughs> like, we love you, Maggie. Like you're not, you're not, you don't, you don't look old. You're great. <laughs> but that is crazy that he's like a year or two years older than what Pat was when they did. It's crazy. Right, the, yeah. the, the first film. It's crazy. Bless him. I know, if you imagine having Pat in it, that would have just been amazing. Having a fight between him and Chris, that would have been really cool. I love it. I love those moments when they ha when they take those little moments in seasons one, two, and three as well, actually, like, you know, where they have those memories of him and you have those little, they, he has those voiceovers in head and you're a bit like, yeah. oh God. And it, and it has the, the Miyagi theme like behind it as well. Yes. Ooh, with the pan pipes. <laughs> yeah, I do that all the time. When... <laughs> yeah. I do it every time to say when it happens, but um, yeah, it's, I, I love it. Like I said, uh, it's just that nostalgia moment that is just incredible uh, about the show and just makes you love it even more. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just amazing. So um, moving on, moving on to season three, but with that very last moment at the end of season two, when we see Miguel do his hands Gruber. Oh my God. <laughs> Don't forget though, it? like, I mean, this is the one thing that I agree that everybody from Netflix, we waited two years to yeah. find out what happened. Yeah. <laughs> like it finished in 2018. It was filmed and ready to go. No, sorry, it was filmed and ready to go in 2020. It was like 29, I think it was 2019 when it came out, sorry. Uh, and then we had to wait all of 2020, no yeah. updates because they sold the rights to Netflix. And then, you know, they had to release series one and two to then build the fan base up ready for series three. But okay. it was filmed and ready to go. Like it mm. was ready and edited that like, they could have released it. Uh, but no, it was like build the fan base, fair enough. But we had to wait two years to find out yeah. what happened fans. after that. 
Uh, and obviously we met them, obviously with the pictures in the background, we met them at Comic-Con yeah. and we we're just talking about it all just like, like what, what, what were you thinking? Like when you read that, at that scene, like it was just crazy to think like it would take that kind of a turn in this yeah. TV show. Like totally. think basically they just killed somebody. <laughs> yeah, because it would be so easy to do the like, just like a knockout or something or whatever, or, yeah. you know, or, or something where it would be like, even, even like, um, like Tori with the the knuckle claws, yeah, like that's quite brutal. And you go, oh, like you know, you could have had a knockout with that or something. And like, oh, they're losing blood, you know, da, 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 they're in, it's going to be bad. But like, they went, yeah. they went for it, didn't they? Like, they went yeah, they kind of as far as they could go without anyone dying, but yeah. you know, a, a, enough to make you go, oh no. And I didn't have to wait as long to. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I know what I was. Luckily, I I watched season one and two as soon as it came to Netflix and I only had the small wait until yeah. um, you know New Year's Day but I mean the choreography as well from that whole scene and it was a long scene the choreography was amazing yeah. it was then... basically in one take as well like if you yeah. watch like behind the scenes you can basically we we're watching a video on it weren't we and yeah. they were basically talking about so this is where the stunt double comes in and you can literally just yeah. see them where they're swapping in and out with the stunt <laughs> double yeah, like, because it's just one continuous shot it's just one continuous shot just going down the corridor of the massive fight A little fight bit like the, uh, just amazing. the uh, Avengers Assemble shot, isn't it, in New York? Yes. <laughs> it's like, it might even be a, um, a sort of subtle nod to that, do you know what I mean? But yeah. the fight choreography, like you say, is brilliant because what I like about it is they kind of, the way they film it and the way they do some of the moves is quite, um, is, is really modern. Yeah. But yeah. at the same time, you know, they kind of, they keep that sort of feel of the 80s kind of fight and a little bit 90s as well. Like one thing I said to one of my friends who'd never seen it before was, I was like, imagine, a, do you remember the, do you remember the film uh, Little Ninjas? Three oh, Ninjas. Three Ninjas. Like, three Ninjas, was it? Yeah. High noon. Three Ninjas like, at High Noon High with Hope Yeah, there was, like a couple, there was quite a few films, yeah. wasn't there? It, there was a, I said, there's a little bit of that kind of yeah. element to it. A little bit cheesy, but like obviously Cobra Kai did it much better. And I loved that they had that mix of the sort of, you know, we're not going to, we're going to, we're going to, stay true to the feel of the 80s uh, but, but we're going to just add some maybe some filming styles in and a couple of moves and like choreography that sort of bring us into you know 2019 yeah. 20 21 etc yeah. i think there's just two more moments before we do finish with series two <laughs> was the moment when he's there with the cool summer like acoustic which is amazing oh. and then he throws his phone away and then it finally pops up to say Ali Milchwarb has <laughs> sent you a friend request. Yeah. We had to wait two years for that as well. Just for yeah, that we had to wait well. two years for that. Wait, <laughs> waiting for Elizabeth Shue because we recently started watching The Boys as well and it was just like, oh is she going to turn up and watch that? Is she actually going to turn up and turn up and do this? I mean, she has to. Everybody else has come back. And then just, just a slight one, but um, it's got my favourite gif of all time. Like, which is the gif I use for everything, which is when the fight starts and Hawk's just like, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> like literally when anybody's watching Cobra Kai or on Facebook or anything they always just put that gif on there because Brilliant. it's like the best thing ever Brilliant. Like, and it. again like Hawk is probably like the best character <laughs> for me for me totally yeah. Um, but yeah so that whole weight of is Ali going to come back I mean Mark what did you think then at the end of season 2 where where was your head at um, what as in as soon as the uh, as soon as that sort of you know yeah. the phone and the and the notes your, came, your long three month wait yeah. <laughs> I, I, had to, I had to like find other areas you know like say I watched a bit of the boys to just get that fixed before she came in actually do you know what? I had a massive crush on Elizabeth Shue when I was a kid anyway back like, to the future I do back to the future um uh, adventures in babysitting cocktail like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Like I didn't understand it then, but like when I watched those films as a kid, I found her so sexy. And actually, mm. watching those films again as an adult, I go, yeah, like she still got it. Because like when you rewatch films as an adult that you loved as a kid, and if you had a crush on someone in it, like and then you look back now and you go, God, what was I thinking? Like, <laughs> but she like, still looks amazing, Elizabeth Shue. For me, especially Elizabeth in Shue the movies, and yeah. Sandra Bullock, like, still got it for me. Even when I watch back, I go, yeah, I get why I liked him as a kid. <laughs> and so so when that notification popped up, I was like, okay, yeah, she's coming. She's coming, definitely. definitely. I In my head, I kind of went, she's not, I don't think she's going to come in straight away because I think that would be too obvious. I think yeah. they're going to let us 
they're kind of sort of like lure us into that trap of going, you know, episode one, like, oh my God, that happened. Like, oh, she's not here. Just yeah. lure you into a false sense of security and then bang, she's in, you know, and you, there was moments where I was going, oh, this could be it now. Oh, that would have been a good moment. No, no, no. And then when it came on, okay, I get why you waited that long to do it and stuff. But it's like it's like two or three episodes until he was like, you do know you have Facebook on your laptop. Oh my god! And then yeah. it was like, and it was like, oh my god, it's happening. He's gonna speak to Ali. Yeah. And it was How like, long oh does it take to deliver happening. the message? <laughs> yeah. but he was well, like, yeah, I think it's gonna take a bit of while, doesn't it? <laughs> <Probably well. laughs> but like, like Troy um, or something, <laughs> is it? But it was like when it happened in it, when episode nine, when it when it finally happened, and we were going in this in this house and it was like we haven't seen this house before and I was like this is it this is Ali's moment it's finally happened and then all of a sudden she was there and I was just like yes <laughs> <laughs> it was good to have her in there yeah definitely it was and nice. for Mike, Mike Barnes or Terry Silver to come in now and then we'll wait, be wait, like, wait 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 wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't there yet but... hang on hang on <laughs> but it was nice though because obviously like Johnny and Carmen had fallen out at first as well because of what happened with Miguel and they were starting to get back together and then suddenly Ali turned up. So then from a girl's perspective, you're like, hang on a minute, <laughs> what's going on? You know, like... You you, you were like, literally having to go, you're like, no, no, Ali, no, you love Carmen. <laughs> you yeah, love Carmen, I was don't like, do you it. really <laughs> like Carmen, he's got a good thing going. He's, I was like, he's not going to do this. As much as the nostalgia bit in me really wants that as well. Um, I think it was really nice how they did it and they actually you know, had Amanda tell Ali about Carmen and she was like, you know, it sounds like you've got a really nice lady, you know, and he was like, yeah, yeah. And that was really nice. And it became more of really what they both needed um, was to have that moment of being a teenager again um, and enjoy mm -hmm. that and have fun. And also to connect together again as friends after, you know, having the last time they'd been together, it had, you know, been so horrible and negative. And it was just nice. She was hugging Daniel as he just got kicked on the floor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. But no, it was I nice. Think, I think, um, you know, that moment that we talk about where he does, he goes, I'm, I'm going to be good with her, thanks, you know. Yeah. I think for him, like, having that moment in the fun fair with her, you know, that almost moment. Yeah. And then and then the sort of like moment in the country club and everything. And and I do like that moment. Um, what is it when she says, oh, Ali Mills, uh, where Daniel introduces her to his yeah. wife as Ali Mills um, Twoba, doesn't he? Yeah. And she goes, oh no, it's actually just Ali Mills now. And I love the look yeah. that Johnny gives Daniel. He just goes. Yeah. It's just, it's, 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 yeah, it's just like, we spent the whole day together. Yeah. And actually, actually, that's quite nice because, like, obviously, like, instantly when he comes in and, and he sees Daniel chatting to her, like, he's like, oh, God, here we go again. Do you know what I mean? But I actually quite liked that that look between Daniel and, and um, Johnny when he gives him the little eyebrows, I'd say, because Johnny's going, there you go, mate. That's good for you. And he goes, yeah. And it's that. Yeah. And it's just a nice little moment of going, we're not, this isn't what this is about anymore. You know, yeah. I quite liked that. Yeah, definitely. I, I loved it. And it was sweet. And it was kind of like Johnny was getting a little bit of sort of like redemption, you know, and he's, like, he's back in the country club looking smart. Yeah. And it was what he needed. It was yeah. Crazy. And I, yeah, I think, I think just having those moments of knowing that they had the almost moment and then the oh, nice yeah. evening in the country club, that's just what he needed probably a little yeah. bit for his confidence to then go, okay, yeah, yeah. that's, that's done for me now. I'm going to go back to Miguel's. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to go back and get my ass kicked by Crease. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and see my son being trained by my enemy. <laughs> oh, my God. So, I mean, obviously, Robbie was missing, and then he goes to jail. And that moment when, you know, Johnny's supposed to be going to see him, and then Miguel's on me like, oh, no, you, you know, stay here Come with Come pray us. with me. Yeah. And he doesn't go. Oh, I, I was screaming at the TV again at that moment. I was like, no, you need to go and see your son. So like I said, it, it would do anything for Miguel, but when it comes to Robbie, he just yeah. overlooks him because I think it's weird because Miguel seems like his son now, whereas yeah. Robbie is just like a lost cause. He doesn't want to waste the opportunity he has with Miguel. Well, he's probably got, I mean, for him, it, it probably feels like he's got he's got the sort of trust and stuff of Miguel and he's built that relationship with him and he's never had that, that relationship with Robbie has always been sort of um, soiled, hasn't it? And as much as he he does have his moments of trying and going, I'm going to be here for you as a dad. I'm going to help you. Da, da, da. He's constantly being batted away uh, by Robbie. So it's easier for him in a way to to sort of 
uh, build that relationship with yeah. Miguel because it's it's reciprocal, isn't it? So exactly, it's already there. He's already built it. So I completely do understand it. But um, but then of course Chris gets his hands, his claws into Robbie. Yeah, I didn't. I think I remember saying, "Oh come on." Yeah. Like when that moment happened and they were on the punch bag and stuff, I was like, oh, come on, mm-hmm. no. Yeah. <laughs> but this is what I mean. Like he he's now on to the dark side, yeah. uh, Robbie now. It's like, is Robbie going to have any redemption? Like we're at this moment now, like we can talk about series four because that's the end of series three. There's a little yeah. bit more to talk about, but um, um, is Robbie going to have a hawk and he's going to change his mind and he's just going to, have his enlightened moment and realize, oh no, it creases bad. I should be with Johnny. I should be with Daniel because he's given me this life that I didn't know I could have. Because again, if Daniel didn't teach him karate, would he be there with Crease now? No. And I, I, I think it's similar um, with the moment in uh, Karate Kid Three where where Daniel goes and, and trains with um, Crease and Silver. Terry. Yeah. you know when and he's learning new things and like obviously they have the moment in the nightclub where he breaks the guy's nose and he's like you didn't think you just went for it like sort of thing and he has those moments of going okay i am learning stuff from them but is it right and i don't know if maybe robbie might have eventually have a moment where he kind of goes you know and and hawk's kind of had it as well hasn't he yeah. uh, but robbie might kind of go this is they, he, he he would probably potentially be pushed maybe further than, than Hawk so. was with the arm breaking and stuff before yeah. he kind of goes, uh, okay, yeah, this is a bit too You much. can definitely see Robbie sweeping the leg or doing some kind oh, of yeah. like a legal kick to the back of Miguel or something, can't you? He's like yeah. trying yeah, yeah. to like break Robbie's it back got, again. The thing with Miguel and, and Daniel and Eli was they had a good grounding, they had a good base, they were good people to start with. And even though Robbie is a good person at heart because you can see that, yeah. He's had a lot of trouble and a lot of the bad stuff, you know, um, and he's got a lot of anger in him, just like Anakin. Just like Daniel in Karate Kid 1. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a lot of anger in him, you know, and he's, he's angry at his dad for choosing Miguel. You know, you know, he was angry at him anyway, but then they were okay, and then he was angry at him now because he's choosing Miguel. He's angry at Sam, you know, um, and and now... He's like, I've been in jail and now you're back together. Yeah. It's just like... Yeah, I think he'll go a lot further. And, I mean, they're talking about six seasons altogether. So I think I think we're going to see Robbie go a lot further until maybe the end. Yeah. Um, I'm putting it out there to say that Cobra Kai are winning in Series 4. They're going to win the All Valley. You think? Okay. Robbie may darkly win it. Because I think, like you said, if they are doing six seasons, like Ralph Macchio said, it... it it's planned out for six seasons, whether they actually do get to do the six seasons, we yeah. don't know, but um, I would to, say to, so. make it, to make it go out for six seasons, you can't have Cobra Kai lose now. No. There has to be some kind of like new way for them to win, whether that be, again, I mean, like not, I said, Johnny versus Crease. Yeah, or yeah. you just bring it in someone new. But at the end of Series 4, uh, Series 3, sorry, Crease yeah. is all like, hello. Like a long time. Well, we Who's he calling? Is, is it Terry Silver and just bringing a series four, series three is kind of going into that crack? It's so three element, isn't it? So. I was reading up about that, about the whole, you know, the phone call. And absolutely, like, I, in my head, in that moment in the cage, um, when he goes, Oh, no, I'll go for you. And then I know obviously when everything's sort of like they get rescued and stuff, and he goes, I owe you my life. Like, I instantly went, Oh, Oh my God, it's Terry, like sort of thing. And I got it. And and my initial instinct, probably like most people, when when he takes that call at the end and he's like, you still owe me a favour or whatever. Um, although interesting, did he owe him the favour when when they messed up Daniel? You know, yeah. but I, I've read theories on people saying that it could be there's bad three boy people. Like aunt, yeah, there's three I people think, it can be. Yeah. yeah, that would. That, I, I think it's going to be Terry Silver, and I and I think Mike Barnes will probably likely turn up in series four, if not series yeah. five. But, five, yeah. um, yeah, I it, it was a cool moment. It was a cool moment. Yeah, like I said, because he was looking at he was looking at the picture at the time. You kind of think, oh, it's going to be Terry Silver, because he never 
never said Terry Silver. They always called him Twig, the guy. Yeah. Just yeah. To obviously, because apparently the, the actor's retired from acting now. So whether they can actually get him back, to, maybe they didn't want to commit to him saying, oh yeah, we're going to yeah. get him back for series four. Well, if he doesn't want to, we can't force him, can they? Yeah, and you they... don't want to recast it because they've had all these people back. Yeah. So yeah. there's, there's only three in a way, people. In a bad yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so there's only three people it can really be as well. Oh, oh, just just before that, that, they had that massive red herring with that guy in the ponytail as well during Crease's backstory, yeah. didn't they? And everyone was thought, this was Terry Silver. But it yeah. wasn't. I no, thought. Yeah. I thought because yeah, he had a ponytail and like quite a sharp nose, he looked like Terry Silver. And then he got shot in the head. And I was like, oh, that's not Terry Silver. And then the bit in the cage at the end, I went, oh, ah. Terry. Yeah. Um. But yeah, like I said, there's only um three people it can be that he called at the end. The main one is obviously going to be Terry Silver. That's the most obvious choice. Yeah. The kind of like maybe choice is going to be Mike Barnes but the third choice apparently that some people have been saying is it's going to be the guy in prison I can't remember what he's called now you know from the actual Cobra Kai Johnny's Gang oh. I can't remember what it's called oh yeah the one um, the one that they keep saying oh he's in prison um, yeah, oh. yeah. I, yeah I, forgot, I forgot his name um, but apparently name. like they say maybe, maybe it could be him okay. like just to throw a massive like spanner in the works maybe Maybe because he was like his star pupil, he was the proper bad guy in Johnny's gang. Yeah, I, maybe I've it could been be him. He was going to come back at some point because they do keep talking about him being in prison and stuff. Yeah, so, so. if if they can't if they can't get silver, maybe Dutch. throw him in there. Dutch, Dutch, was Dutch yeah, yeah, yeah. So I maybe think, Dutch. I, who knows? I think that's why when they when that at that moment happened they've done it very cleverly because instantly yeah. we go they're they're setting themselves they're in a good place with that because yes it is a cliffhanger but everyone's everyone's been left going well that's terry silver brilliant yeah. so if they get him everyone's going to love it anyway and if yeah. they don't get him whatever it's going to be is a kind of oh you yeah. you batted us one way but you've gone another way do you know what i mean so i think they've done they 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 wrote that really cleverly to sort of you're just like on the edge, like you're on a knife edge going, whichever way we go is going to be good. Yeah, and I said, I think that's mainly because I think his name is Thomas Ian Griffith or something like that. He's retired from acting, so you can't really force somebody to come out for a TV show uh, based on something he did like 20 years ago. But um, I'd, like to think I, I, I'd, I'd love to think that because of the universe and the fans, and again, it, it's not just a TV show for the sake of it. It's a TV show for the fans, made by the fans, yeah. for the fans, that he would actually even make, even, I don't care if it's just one episode, just come in and do it. It would be amazing. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, it, it could be any of, it could be any of the three. Um, and I'll be happy with either of them. Um, but Kreese has to be the, he is the main bad guy in the miyagi yeah. Like yeah. he has to be for all six seasons. I don't want to see him get defeated and then go and then they bring in some new like what was that um one from series one like that that blue karate G and it was like that weird uh -oh. one who's all like yeah let's go no <laughs> like, <it's>... you're <laughs> not gonna like, be doing just get like a random like dojo in here just no. like throw in there it's like bring it on where just have him rival like <laughs> dojo yeah. in kind yeah. of thing it'll but be it'll be Cobra it has Kai to be Cobra Kai true. but the whole thing is we love Cobra Kai because it's Johnny's Cobra Kai so can the show still be Cobra Kai if it's I would not Cobra like Kai? Johnny to get Cobra Kai back but you know we will see we will see what about Creasy's backstory though I mean when we when we when we when they started doing that when we traveled back in time I just turned to Jamie, I went, no, no. I don't want a backstory of Crease is a bastard. I was like, I didn't ask for this. I don't want it. I was like, I am not having you give, give him a sob story. He's a dick. He's yeah. the core. And yeah. So, I mean, it was okay. It was good. But I don't want them to try and make out that he was a nice guy. And Yeah. Know. But to be fair, he had that girlfriend and he was nice. Uh, and he, to be fair, he is loyal because... The way he's treated Tory, like the way he was with Tory saying he's going to beat up this, well, he didn't say he's going to beat up, but the way he looked after when he knew something was going on with the landlord. Yeah. Like he, there are parts of him which are good, but he is evil and rotten to the core. And that's the way we, we want him to be because think that's we all him. like somebody to hate. I think that's just him protecting his best fighter though, because she couldn't yeah. be Cobra Kai. I was going to say, his, is there an ulterior motive behind it? If I yeah. keep her sweet, she's going to still fight with me. And she's, yeah. yeah, like you say, one of my best fighters. 
yeah, I want to keep it sweet. Not like not really a kind of like, oh my god, this girl shouldn't be like messed around and sexually abused yeah. by you know her landlord or whatever. I think I potentially could have been an ulterior motive. But I did think like you, like when they were doing the backstory, I was like, where are they going with this? Like what yeah. what they did? And it was clearly obviously to set up the the yeah. I owe you my life moment and then the phone call at the end it was, it was a it was a big setup for that yeah. one moment wasn't it it was a really yeah. big setup for that one moment was, you imagine yeah. now it's on netflix and they got all that money now what if they do like a flashback to rambo because isn't like um isn't martin, martin Coven Coe rambo, rambo isn't he yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, i just love all the memes that they were. you just see Sylvester Stallone and martin Cove just walking out and he's just like when i get out of here i'm opening my own dojo yeah <laughs> <laughs> so you know just do random flashbacks to that as well just bring Sylvester Stallone into it just bring it into a whole universe yeah <laughs> that's yeah. crazy but it's never gonna happen obviously but um um for series four I'm thinking Terry Silver but I'm happy with Dutch or or Mike Barnes I want them all to make an appearance at some point yeah I think either way either way would be good I think I think they'll all be in it at some point um <clears throat> Just thinking about uh, something else uh, that we need to discuss. Um, I mean, like we said at the end of season three, season three, season two, we saw Miguel fall. Um, yeah. We find out he's not dead. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Spoiled by the trailers. Yes, yeah, yeah. by the trailers. <laughs> um, and uh, obviously, we have to go through his recovery, which I think again is that really sweet relationship with him and Johnny, and how Johnny helps him get back. Oh, yeah. The foot tapping moment at the gig. Yeah, it was a good. It was a good little story arc. That I liked. It. I enjoyed it. It was. I love how he's like back fighting properly again by the end. Of it. <laughs> it's like that was a really. Oh, yeah, like, he, he has that moment where he's just like, I can fight. Yeah. <laughs> he starts beating Kyla. That yeah. is very eighties movie. Yeah. Yes, definitely, definitely. But no, um, uh, one of my favorite scenes during the rehabilitation bit is when he's like. Oh, Ali's got all of these photos. Let's recreate these photos. Yeah. <laughs> he's just there, just like taking all the photos of the angels and like, reading the book. And he throws the book in the bin. Yeah, and he's just absolutely. like, oh, let's eat some sushi. And I think uh, Sholo recently put them all up, the photos. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, because obviously he was taking the photos at the time. He's actually put them on Instagram. And he's Brilliant. just there, like, just putting all the sushi in his mouth. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's just amazing. Oh, gross. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I just love it. But I think. For me, I was going to ask you both a question. Mm. Which was the better fight scene, the school fighting scene or the fight at the LaRusso house? It's a big debate. Like, literally, like, the school scene was just incredible. But so was the fight at I the think, LaRusso house. I think I'd need to watch the LaRusso one again because I've seen the school one a couple of times. Three times. <laughs> you know, three times. Yeah. And so I know it back to front. And I know how long it is and I know the choreography. Whereas I can only remember small bits of the, the one at the LaRusso house. Um, so but that's interwoven to... with them at the country house as well, whereas the school scene was just school continuous just throughout. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I'd probably pick that for now. Um, but if I watched the, rewatched the LaRusso one, I don't know. Yeah, I, th- I think the school one for me was maybe... Yeah. The, 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 the Russo one was, was good. I enjoyed it. And obviously the moments for like Hawk and stuff and everything yeah. uh, were good. Um, but I think just as an epic fight scene to sort of finish off the season to end how it ended probably was the better one for me and like you say the way that it was filmed it was all one sort of it looked like one fluid shot or it was one fluid shot you know that that for me that just gives it the little bit of edge over the other one yeah it had a bigger impact at the end i think i'm pretty sure that the series three one was one shot as well because it just like basically sends in the courtyard and just keeps going round to like the kitchen, to the hallway, to the living room. Parts it just it, keeps going yeah. on like that. Yeah. It had the little it's breaks beautiful. where like Tori yeah. went and found Sam. Um, a great bit though was when when it first started, when the kid goes out, um, <laughs> goes outside because of the cat. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, you have a cat, then it comes through the window. <laughs> oh my god, that little kid. I, I love, I love Bert. <laughs> Bert's, Bert's one of my favourite characters as well just the little guy as I remember when we were starting series 3 and I was like where is he where is he there he is he's, he's been promoted to the front row because Miguel's not there anymore he's just there on the front row with Hawk just like Brilliant. little guy just like <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah because Miguel's now uh, in Eagle Fang Karate how brilliant was Eagle Fan Karate? The brief moment in time that Eagle Fan Karate existed <laughs> that was quite fun I did enjoy that and obviously like um I just love the way that he, that Johnny talks to them, and and 
and also okay it's funny when he does it in the dojo but when he does it in that open space park and everything and he's just <laughs> it's going, that's that's just brilliant that like in and around the public he's like shouting all like those profanities at them and stuff and he's just like but it's done in such a great way do you know what i mean and and then questioning that like eagles don't have fangs and all that sort of stuff and everything and just put the t-shirt on yeah and the big guy wearing the tie. all in one size yeah. <laughs> classic yeah. imagine stingray wearing that one he would never have left crease though so. but um yeah i think going into series four like are they going to be called eagle fang miyagi do what what the massive thing like that moment where they started playing I can feel it in the air tonight. Oh my and God. it was finally happening. Yeah. Like they were all joining together. Uh, like I said, obviously, they, they, they had that moment where uh, Sam was all like, we need to come together to beat Cobra Kai. Like, we need to do this. We can come, we can join Miyagi Do and Eagle Fang and we can take on Cobra Kai and we can, we can beat them if we, if we stick together. And then that moment when that music hit and then they're all there in, mm-hmm. in Miyagi Do. And then Daniel's there, and then all of a sudden Johnny comes out, and you have that little look oh between them, and yeah. they're just like, and then that's how it ends. It's just like no way. Then Hawk walks in. Yeah, they all walk in. Oh my god, and just line up with them. Are we? Are we? Like... Are we kind of moving on to season four theories now? Wait, wait, wait! I've just realised we haven't talked about Okinawa. But you know, we can go <laughs> yeah, that's what I want to talk about. <laughs> I know, yeah, I yeah, yeah. About. Okay, Mark, take lean on Okinawa. Go, on, go. On. Right, well, this episode I loved um, because this, for me, provided one of those <laughs> moments for me, and I and I just went, "What?" Yeah. I mean, I, I loved the rest of it. I loved all the fight scenes, but that moment when he fights, um, uh, oh god, what's it called? Chosen. Yeah. Chosen, yeah. Um, <laughs> And and you and, and what I love that they do is is that they're they're keeping you guessing whether he's gonna absolutely slaughter Daniel or whether he is gonna be friends. Um and it was nice that they brought in a little bit of redemption for that character to just go, okay, like I had my ass handed to me in that, you know, in that village by the pond and whatever, and like you ruined my life, sort of thing. I could still be very, very much angry with you and stuff, but he he actually teaches Daniel and that moment where he, where he hits the pressure point um, and the music kicks off and Daniel's like, what did you just do? <laughs> and then, and he's just like stood there going, oh, and he can't do anything. <laughs> and, and I went, Oh, that was good. That was so, so good. That was so good. And again, I knew that was going to crop up somewhere later on in the series. And that, so that this, mm. this episode yeah. for that moment alone was one of my favorites just because of that moment. It's kind of foreshadowing as well. The fact, this is what like chosen managed to forgive him and he absolutely hated him like why yeah. can't johnny yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> like they absolutely had this massive rivalry in karate kid too like you forget johnny was only in karate kid one yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, and they have this sort of rivalry but like chosen like tried to kill him it's like fight to the death yeah, like, yeah there yeah. was just there was just a tournament <laughs> like, between johnny and daniel i know uh, but chosen was just like yeah yeah it's fine like don't worry Punk. and we're all we're all good i'll teach you some uh, secrets here have a man now. Yeah. <laughs> that was such a that was such a brilliant moment as well when he when he obviously hits the pressure points he gets him down he pulls the arm back and you're going okay crazy and then he's like Hark! and and he laughs and he goes i've waited so long today and i and i i knew that was coming i wanted it to come and it was yeah. brilliant when it came it was, it was yeah. i remember laughing and just going but yes yeah. well done there was just so, good. so many beautiful moments in the okinawa stuff as well yeah. because they actually obviously okinawa is not a real place but like they actually filmed it in japan didn't they yeah. whereas in Cobra in karate kid 2 they didn't so they actually went there and filmed it and then there was like with I can't remember her name, but when she came into it, and then uh, Kimiko. The, yeah, yeah, Kimiko, and then the girl that he saved yes. from the yeah. storm as well. Like, that was a beautiful that moment. Was beautiful. just that, and obviously, she's like the leader of this um, this place that obviously oh, helps okay. Daniel save his car really, really, dealership. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Very so early. yeah, Very but like, we don't care because it's amazing. No, no, no. Yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah, and then Okinawa was just it phenomenal. Was it yeah. was, um, it was like two or three episodes, weren't it, when he was there? Yeah, yeah. It was just nice, like, to see that Daniel didn't know everything about uh, Mr. Miyagi, you know, and he was learning new things, but he's like, he didn't tell you everything, you know. Um, that was really yeah. cool. 
for him to see the yeah, cheers eye. for that could have done with that in all those three fights that I had but yeah <laughs> the thing is help me now before obviously sam came at the end of series three do you think daniel would have killed crease after all those pressure points because he was on the verge of like after you know after he hit all the pressure points and crease was on his knees so and good. he was like so at, the, at the verge just to like literally basically kill him with like another punch or whatever and then sam stops him like do you think that would have been a moment where he he would have done it or i don't even remember sam turning up I yeah she's sam in it sam runs and goes dad dad Fight, yeah, and then you see it yeah. down oh. like, you're looking and you see it down the yeah. sort of like the pathway of the, the mini mall, yeah. don't you? Yeah. I I I don't think he would have killed him, but I think he <laughs> maybe would have knocked him out or something yeah. like that because he's pushed past a point uh but you know at that point because they've broken uh, they've broken into the house, they've absolutely like smashed. Well he didn't he didn't know that, did he? Did he? Oh he did, didn't he? Yeah, he came back yeah. after that, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, because he comes in and he goes, You came to my house. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I think he's livid. He's probably gone like, this is going too far enough. Like, you know, he's learned at this point that Sam's like really struggling and he's really scared. And, and he's going, this is ridiculous. This is our fight, not theirs. Like all yeah. our own problems have been passed onto them and they don't need to have those problems. And it's gone to the point of becoming so dangerous. You know, someone's had their, someone's been paralyzed um, and recovered, um, you know, and <laughs> people have had arms slashed and broken. And, and it's Amanda like- had the whole like, thingy like restraining order as well like amanda even tried to just like let's just call the police let's just end this it's just it's ridiculous let's just go call the police yeah and then crease is just like yeah it's putting a restraining order because you slapped me and it's just like like, even like she can't do anything as well um and it was it's just great like the the only way to beat him is to kill him i guess (laughs) yeah Uh, it's a bit dark but you know (laughs) i don't think think it's gonna make sure he dies i think it had been a knockout or something maybe or whatever Yeah. yeah I don't think, and even then, Mike Daniel, after after the fact, might have sort of regretted it a little bit. But I don't, I don't think he would have gone as far as he did what he needed to do by stopping him, like you know, by hitting the pressure points, which I absolutely loved because I was like, I knew it was going to happen. Well, yeah, I mean, Johnny's there fighting him, and I'm like, Daniel's got to turn up at some point because Crease is like about to kick Johnny's ass, and then there he is. Daniel turns up and does all that. I knew it weren't going to happen, but I was like, the moment where. You saw that knife on the floor and Crease was picking up. It's like, if they stab or kill Johnny, I am never watching this show again. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, I know it's not going to happen, but you're kind of insinuating that it could happen. And if this happens, I'm not watching this show again. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I, I, I just... It, it was it was there was, was a great moment that when they had that fight and also I'm thinking like not only like in my head I went how is he how is Johnny getting his ass kicked by Chris like you know yeah, yeah Johnny's a little bit older but like Chris is a lot older and then I went these two look really good as actors doing all those moves and everything at their ages like well done them. well done like you you know and it and it doesn't look like really bad where they're just you know it's like a, a kick that's supposed to be a high kick is like really low like yeah, no, they're okay. hitting the points that they need to hit and it looks good it doesn't look sort of like slow and you know some like some sort of slug karate or anything it, it's like <laughs> you know it's really good and and so whilst in that moment of watching him go shit how's he gonna beat um crease like he has he has he got it is he gonna be able to outlast him but crease has got you know crease has got more power more experience and everything and then at the same time going this is also the actors that are doing this. This is really yeah. cool. Like they're, they're still doing this at their ages. It was brilliant. It was brilliant. Um, we've not got a lot left to say about season three, um, but there is one thing that I want to talk about, and that is uh, Dimitri's rep and how that, <laughs> that improved. That was fun. That was fun. That I was really like that. Again, a nice little moment, like just among when everything's starting to build that pressure and you're going like everything's going to kick off soon and having that storyline of him just getting that bit of confidence and getting the, the hot school popular girl and everything, you know, and, uh, and yeah. having his moment was like, just really fun to, to sort of like watch whilst all the other stuff was going on. Yeah. Well, the it, moment she turned up again, you could tell she was different and she was looking at him differently. And it was like, oh. it's because she was embarrassed though, weren't she? She wasn't yeah. like the cool kid anymore because you know, that video went viral yeah. and she got beaten up by Aisha. He was like this big fugly girl as she tried to obviously put her out to be. 
<laughs> that's like you know when she was eating all like the cheese it's at night at the uh, yeah. at the dance but um yeah there was that bit where with dimitri and i can't remember her name Yes. When they finally got together, the Yasmin, and in a, in series one, where he's just basically like in like the first few episodes, he's just saying, "I would kill both of you just for her to spit in my face." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's just such a great line. And then obviously yeah. they're like halfway through the series and just making out behind some lockers. It's just amazing, yeah. like it to is. think that the transformation and when he finally like in series two when he finally gets to like sand the floor and he finally gets those moments where everything just starts to click and then. He has that moment against Hawk in the school, and when he yeah. finally gets to get that little bit of confidence that Hawk had, and to yeah. say like, I, you know what, I can defend myself now and I can do this, but then obviously the arm break happens. But <laughs> that's what I yeah. like about Dimitri. Like, you know, it's not just it doesn't just click for everybody straight away. You know, it it shows it shows him. You know, as all those other people like like I probably would be that. You know, it takes a little longer to learn these things and to build your confidence and. But he gets there. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have really good reflexes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she gets scared when I walk into a room and go, oh, hello. And she's like, ah. Oh, yeah, that's what my wife does that. Laura does that. I'm, I'm just like, like, hello. You are, you are aware that I live with you, aren't you? That I am in this house with you. Like, you don't have to be so scared. We get into our own little world sometimes. <laughs> Um, but yeah, um, so a lot of great arcs for all the characters over over three seasons. Not more. Is that, of season arc, but... is that for Dimitri as well? Like, is that going to continue as we head into season four? Like, is is that a potential you know start of something that it's then they they're hinting something but not giving you enough to make you think about it? But can something happen with him in the next season? What you mean, like Hawk, like? Oh well, well, yeah. Is he Rob- gonna have like a big tournament and go far, kind of? Thing? Oh like, right, yeah. Well, yeah, because he's getting co- you know confident, like you say, he's, it's finally clicking for him. He's learning how to defend himself now. He's getting hot girls on his side. You know, he's becoming a little bit popular. Um, is is that going to be his boost of confidence rather than just like you know, it's that is that that boost of confidence through a girl and and finally clicking. That's his mohawk and tattoo. Yeah. You know, and is it gonna is something gonna happen for him in season four? I, I'd like to see more Dimitri development. I uh, I do really like him as a character. Some people find him annoying early on, but he just he just says what everyone's thinking, you know, he speaks the truth. <laughs> <laughs> the Carl Pilkington of Cobra Kai. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's a cool dude. So what do you think is gonna happen? Like what are what are your wishes for series four? I'm just intrigued to see how they bring Miyagi-Do and Cobra Kai together and the different styles and if they're going to change. There's definitely going to be some name. clashes. Oh, yeah, for sure. But, um, like, it yeah. wouldn't be fun if it's just like, oh, yeah, we're working great together. Yeah, let's do this. Yeah, no. Uh, it's going to be like, a, I reckon it could be like a whole series of just clashing or maybe they'll go their separate ways and then come back by the end of the season. Yeah. You don't know, but... Yeah, I, I, I think... Yeah, I don't think it's going to be easy for them. I I think they may decide on a name that's neither um, Eagle Fang or Miyagi, or they'll do like a Miyagi Fang or Eagle Miyagi. Yeah. Lawrence, like that. Lawrence Larusso Karate. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Yeah, I, I think they're going to have to find because neither of them, the, the Cobra Kai originals slash Eagle Fang, aren't going to want to be like. And you know Miyagi Do's and vice versa. It's not who they are. They need to find, you know, a balance. A balance, as the yeah. Daniel would say. That's what Miyagi Do's about. But um, like I said, Miyagi Do's about self defense and never for fighting. But Johnny Lawrence's is strike hard, strike fast, no mercy. Strike first, strike hard, no mercy. Obviously, it's not as much anymore because of Cobra Kai. But he's still kind of like we need to attack. Attack is the best form of defense. Whereas yeah. Daniel's like, no, defense is the best form of defense and attack. Yeah. So is is Daniel going to teach Johnny? Are we going to have like a great moment where Johnny starts doing all like the whole on the tree moment or? Yeah. Uh, I mean, be that'd be pretty cool. cool. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know. Imagine that. Like a, a Daniel trains uh, Johnny and Johnny trains uh, Daniel montage. I'd like to see that. I'd like to that'd see that. That'd be quite cool. And that's it. Like both of them are very good, but let's create our own cry style of best of both worlds. Like and Hannah now- Montana. And now they're armed with the power of the new uh, Miyagi pressure point thing as well. Yeah. Yeah. So there are plenty of avenues, and I'm sure um, 
they've got plenty of ways that they want to do it. And again, going off the first three seasons, I'm pretty happy and pretty confident they are going to go down the right way and it's not going to be disappointing and they are going to do something amazing because, again, like I said, several times during this podcast, it's for the fans made by the fans. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so... I'm sure it's going to be incredible, whatever they decide to do, whether the Old Valley, they could even tease us and the Old Valley might be Series 5. They might just have the whole build-up. And then the end of Series 4 could be them going into the Old Valley. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know, do you? Well, I mean, that's a, that, it's that's like a Dragon Ball Z. You had about five episodes of one fight with Frieza in Dragon Ball Z. It's just five episodes <laughs> of building up a fight and then having a fight. <laughs> so. Yeah, I think I think that sounds that sounds possible to do that, like... You've, you've got to bring it to that moment of, at the end of season four where it, it gives that sort of cliffhanger. But, you know, like you say, is is the All Valley Tournament not going to be until the end of season five? Yeah, well, where are we up to in the year at the moment? So the... oh, we are in February. <laughs> not our no, as in, as in... <laughs> in the Cobra Kai universe, because um, they went back to school at kind of, Half part way through the series, we're not it's just at Christmas, aren't we? Because the it, it's like yeah, the Christmas, ball. Christmas that they're yeah. at, the, at, the, at, the, at the party, yeah. 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 So yeah. you've still got because even though in the films the tournament was in December, um, in the TV show it seems to in be Cobra Kai, it was somewhere. April or March, weren't it? Yeah, something like that. So yeah, you, yeah, we might it might end with it, it might end before, I'm not sure, but um, I would like to see. I would personally like to see, and I think the way they built it at the end of season three, it could be going that way, and um, would be Sam and Tori in the tournament at the final. That's what I would like to see. Because I think they're the big rivals. With some Hillary team. Swank like help. Like yeah. she would, even just coming in for one episode to help Samantha, like just yeah. obviously build a train yeah. a little bit more. Because again, Miyagi only had one female student. I think he only had three students overall, didn't he? Like Daniel. Julie Pierce yeah, I don't and think then her father. Them. Well, listen, also, I think it's possible that Daniel and um, what's Hilary Swank's character called in the films? Julie Pierce. Yeah. It's possible that they may have, uh, might have uh, met at, at sort of Miss Miyagi's funeral. Yes. Yeah. So that you could have that contact there. You so you, you bring her. her in. Yeah. 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 Because again, he might not know because he's kind of uncomfortable with the whole idea. Like, he's not sure how to help his daughter with the post traumatic stress or anything. Yeah. So he'd be like, well, I've got somebody who can help who's been trained in the Miyagi Do ways. Yeah. Here's Julie Pierce, and then Hilary Swank turns up. So, hi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can be the next karate kid. Yeah. And even in that moment at the end of series one, when she starts training as well, and it's like, oh, yeah, she's going to have a big series too, Samantha LaRusso. But, um, yes, I just I hope she has a bit of a badass moment because like she's she had a little kind of moment, like but it. she is a little bit annoying and wet, isn't she? Yeah, Even she in her good. fighting style, it's very it's very nice and not not it's as a dance mix. Yeah, she's, I mean, she even said in interviews it's kind of mixed with dance her fighting style. Yeah, because she's I've got a dance background. It's mixed yeah. kind of with dance her, the way she fights. It's kind of more like, and you saw that. I know obviously it wasn't made that way, but when they did the whole circle thing with Robbie, yeah. it's just a dance routine, isn't it? <laughs> Basically. Yeah. 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 Um, so I think hers is more of a dance style. And apparently every character has their own unique style as well. Like no one character's got the same fighting style. That's cool. Like, I think that's one oh, thing like that. that the writers wanted to make was each, each person has their own unique take on the style of it all yeah um so yeah i like that i like that but yeah like i said that is what i'd like to see um but i know you guys think that well you know you definitely think jamie that robbie's gonna be winning the final i can't see miguel coming all the way back and going to the final it doesn't yeah. make sense he's just had who that would robbie massive... fight then who would robbie Hawk. fight because he's not got a big i, I said I, I said i said hawk versus kyla but the whole thing is Kyle is not a main character to be the main person in that fight. No. It has to be somebody that they've built up for. I mean, he's come but, back into it, hasn't he? But I don't yeah. think it's it's still big it, enough. It's not it big enough. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Unless they just have the fight at one bit and Kyla beats him, but then it's a whole, well, is it going to be Kyla Miguel in the final? That's another route. But again, Kyle is not a main character. The only main fighter is Robbie or Tori. Yeah. 
yeah. and they've built up so much of Sam and Tori. Ooh. I mean, it could be, it could be Miguel versus Tori. It could be That's Hawk versus Tori. Yeah, what about it? It doesn't it, have to be female v female male. No, yeah, if it was a you know here's here's something that could happen if you had a Miguel um, Tori um, yeah. like final. Um, he would show she beat him. She beat him, him in the she, training. If we take a couple of steps back, like as in uh, episodes from whenever the you know whenever this final is like whether it's in season four or five has tory done something to sam again to to make miguel angry and then that's that's the build-up that's the tension between them in that final it's not just a you know cobra kai versus yet to be named uh johnny lawrence and daniel larusso <laughs> uh, dojo is is that going to be is the, it's the the dojos against each other plus miguel having that sort of um, anger towards Tori for messing Sam up because she has like because because yeah. even though we we finished the the uh, season in season three she's not we still don't know if she's gotten over that yet do we no she she, she has she has those she has the moments in the fights but just because she pulls her you know shit together in that fight it doesn't mean that it's gone that easy do you know what I mean she no. could easily sort of um, relapse. You saw how scared she was when Tori came in into it's her it's her area it's her house it's her yeah. you know and she walks in and she actually, she looks like she's gonna kill her you yeah. know and she was scared and it's gonna take a long time to get over that. But again, like you said, Miguel may just show mercy on Tori and then Tori just absolutely demolishes Miguel in the final and that's the reason why Crease yeah. wins. I did and think that because but then... Miguel. If you go off what Mark said, if 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 he's really angry, if she's really hurt yeah. Sam, then it could go the other way in that in that Tory. But Miguel's not violent Miguel. though, is he? It, to points like he'll always show mercy. Like in the Robbie fight, like after everything that happened, he still showed mercy. So he could show mercy again, and then Tory beats him, and then not if he's in a tournament. Kai win. If it's, if it's going to be Maybe, the winning, yeah. the win yeah. for him in the tournament plus the win for. Um, yet to be named Dojo, yeah. Um, yeah. ousting Cobra Kai to say bye bye. You know you're not going to be in this town anymore. That that might be the thing that just it's not like he's going to do an illegal move on her or anything. It, it's just yeah. he'll have he'll have enough to finish it off when if he if he needs to and if he has the opportunity. Yeah, yeah, but there's no one else. It has to be from Cobra Kai. It has to be Robbie, or it has to be Tori. Yeah. I, I still fight a case like Kyler might have a really big season as to be like the complete bastard of the season. Like you don't know, yeah. do you? Like he could have like a massive arc in series four where he is coming up to the like because he had a massive brutal fight scene with Miguel in the house. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It was absolute brutal where he's just punching him and throwing him on the sofa and like beating his back up and stuff. Oh yeah, like he's that. up against the wall, he, isn't he, yeah. Miguel? And it has the sort and of just punching him. Yeah. Like, yeah. So again, like he could have this moment, but I don't know. I don't think they will have Sam and Tori in the final. I don't know why. I just don't think it's gonna happen. <laughs> I reckon they are gonna have their moment, but yeah. I don't think it's gonna be in the tournament. We feel yeah. that like it could be like a Cry Kid 2 moment where they're fighting for the death and they're all just doing this whole thing. <laughs> get your, get your guns out. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, yeah. but... but we're all thinking that but, but that Tory wouldn't be a massive surprise to be in the final. No. Like, no. It'd be a strong choice to have. It, it makes sense for it to be Tory, like the yeah. way it's going. But I think Kyler could be like Mike Barnes. He has the potential to be like the bad boy yeah. because he is, he is like... Yeah, uh, a high school well. wrestler, isn't it? He's a high school wrestler yeah. who's been trained in karate under Crease, who was a bully before all of this. Yeah. Now yeah. adding in this extra element, he could be literally like the big bad. Yeah, yeah. and Robbie is being, being Daniel <laughs> I mean, in Karate yeah. Kid 3 at the moment. You know, it, it, could, it could be Robbie versus Kyla in the fan and Robbie makes his redemption halfway through the season and decides to join them. You don't know, do you? Like something big could happen between them. Oh, they could pull us anywhere. They could pull us anywhere. Yeah, exactly. There's so many different ways that we can just fantasy book for now. They're all like eventually gets filmed and released because they haven't obviously due to COVID since they finished filming in 2019. They haven't filmed anything. Yeah. So it's been like two years nearly since they've actually filmed. Yeah, Anthony's gonna be like six foot in season four. (laughs) (laughs) Anthony could come back and win it all. (laughs) This is for you, Dad. (laughs) Bless him. Um, 
yeah i mean i think we've kind of like theorized all we can over season four i don't know if anyone else has got anything more to add at all not theories wise no i don't think no. so anything no, else i there's, mean there's so many ways that they could go with it i mean close to the sign when you get rumors of like maybe this person's going to return like you said yeah. there's there's so many fantasy bookings of dutch mike barnes yeah. of terry silver there's a lot to go off yeah yeah, like yeah, there's so many stuff in the Cry Kid universe that you could bring back. And we, we talk about as well, like obviously we've just sat here and discussed going, oh, um, you know, um, Tori could be in the final because of this, that and the other. And could Miguel be in the final against Tori be, and, and he beats her because she's done something. But we also forget about, you know, who is that character that um, Crease is calling at the end, whoever it is, and what sort of an influence are they going to have on the students? Yeah. Kyla. That's a massive factor. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Think, I think that <laughs> person, be it Terry Silver or someone else, is going to have a massive influence on building Kyle, Kyler up to be the big evil. See? That season. The end game. That's why I'm a writer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why. Hire me, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I know one, one thing I would like to see in season four, and that is the return of Stingray. That would be very the return of Ali, <laughs> like maybe he's some just more been Ali. led under the leaves for season three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, no, I think. Well, no, they, they said at the beginning, didn't he? He's got a restraining order because obviously yeah. he beat up kids in high school, so he's got a restraining <laughs> order. So like this, you know, like oh yeah, he's been re- in restraining order. He's not allowed in like two hundred yards in, of kids. So, yeah. so I don't You're know right. how I'd, I'd love to bring it back but th- that's the whole thing that they said as well I mean we've, we've spoken for god knows how long now and we haven't even mentioned Aisha Aisha wasn't in series 3 no she disappeared didn't she like, yeah, again like five, her so father like... sold the house and moved away because of the fight but the writers have always said nobody's gone forever in the Karate Kid universe yeah. so Aisha could come back and she could have a massive part yeah. in, in the fight like, maybe which way would she go Sam. though would Who she would help she Tori so, yeah, there's so many different options that they could have. And like I said, there's so many different people from the Karate Kid universe they could bring back as well. So, yeah. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? Just um, not Jaden Smith. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay. Uh, quick fire round. Um, Sam or Tori? As in what? Just who? As in a better one. character. Pick one. Okay. Yeah. Pick one. Tori. 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 Cool. Daniel or Johnny? Daniel. Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ali or girl in Ak- Akinawa? Ali. 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 <laughs> uh, Miguel or Robbie? Miguel. Miguel. Totally Miguel. Um, what's he called? Anoush or whatever his cousin's called? <laughs> <laughs> the cousin. I love yeah, it. What's he called? when he came back in series where I was like here he is he's back I can't remember his name. Yeah. him or Anoush I love is him. it like Cousin Louis or something Louis something like that Cousin yeah, Louis or Anoush yeah. I like Anoush Louis cool. Anoush is good as well like the whole moment where like Tom Ford or whatever he's called was trying to like buy buy the property from him and Anoush like kept his allegiance and went back to yes. went back to Daniel which is great but again like Tom Ford's a great villain what if he starts a dojo he could yeah. be a big villain in series five or six, you know, trying to rival Daniel. Lo- Daniel, I'd Larissa. like to go back on my quick choice, by the way, and I am actually going to choose Johnny because I really like his character in Cobra Kai, and yes. I, I, I don't think at any moment do I find Johnny annoying, but there's definitely moments in in the series when I find Daniel annoying. Yeah, ditto to that for sure, for sure. Are you wanting to see them both fight? Maybe like a Rocky free frame phrase. Nah. Because there's been moments where they've nearly like they had that moment in series two when they went back and found Sam at his house and they yeah, had that little it. bit of a fight in the in a house, and then they had that you, moment in the pool in series one. But that's it, really. They, they also had they also had the moment in in the garage in season yeah. three as well, didn't they? It was like it wasn't as big, and it wasn't just about them. They he obviously they helped each other sort of uh, you know beat each other up, but then they had yeah. a bit of a mini sort of fight as well. Did, yeah, yeah. Um. I don't think I don't think they're going to give us that moment because they're they're clearly showing us that whilst we are still dealing with their issues against each other, it's all about the kids really now, isn't it? Yeah. So I, I think you know we could have a couple more squabbles, but I don't think we're going to get a 
Rocky free. I know it would be a call, wouldn't it? With like the sort of high <laughs> kick at each other's faces at the same time, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Both doing the crane kick. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, do you know what? That could. I mean, I'm, and I'm actually surprised that they haven't done that in any episode yet. And they haven't gone with a typical 80s freeze frame episode ending. Yeah. That would be fun. It could still come. And let's put it out there. Let's have, like, you know... The very last episode of the very last season. Yeah. It's just Johnny and Daniel you know, looking like, at each yeah. other. Just Thank like... God that's all over now. Thank God that's all over now. We're sorted all that. Let's, let's have a spa together. Yeah. <laughs> and not a Let's settle this once and for all. Freeze frame, high kick. <laughs> or, yeah, Johnny, Johnny could be going for a high kick and, and Daniel's doing the crane kick. Well, like Daniel's going... Well, they're for... both doing the crane kick. Or oh, Daniel's going for the... <laughs> Daniel's going for the crane kick and Johnny decides to just wax off. Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> yeah. He's learned the ways of Miyagi. Yeah. yeah. I love it. I love it. Well, it's been a beautiful two hours, guys. <laughs> only, been, only been two hours? Yeah, two hours of full of nostalgia. Um, and uh, I'm really, really excited to season four, whenever we get it. Uh... New Year's Day, hopefully. Hurry up. Let's binge it all Day. again. I mean, yeah. I'm pretty sure we're going to watch series one, two, and three again. I definitely think I will, yeah. 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 Like, yeah. I've, I've watched series one five times. Oh, really? <laughs> like, I watched it by myself, then with Mercedes, then just before series two, and then just before series three as well. See, the only thing I've watched that much is probably Stranger Things. I've seen season yeah. one four times, season two four times, and I've seen season three three times. Yeah, that would be my one other thing. That and Cobra Kai are my two babes. Yeah. yeah, I won't. I won't come on for that show if you want to talk about that because what strange yeah, thing. Just be us. <laughs> yeah. I'm happy. I watched series one and a half, and I was like, okay, not for me. I, I'm surprised actually because there's so many, so many nods to all the '80s films, like yeah. in in that series, in in that sort yeah. of program. That I'm surprised that you you don't like it because there's so many cool well. nods to to like countless countless '80s films that we all know and love and that are iconic yeah. moments and stuff, but. I mean, like going back to Cobra Kai, I mean, you got the two pictures in the background there with William Zabka. I'm a, I don't know if she's told you the story of when when we met William Zabka in the photo shoot. I like, made everybody's oh, day. I made right. everybody's day. I think I did you. I you might have put something up about this on Facebook, did yeah. you? Yeah. So yeah. if you if you told me, like I'd remember it, but I can't remember it now. Thinking of it, go on. What happened? Jamie wants to tell the story clearly. Oh, go on. No, you can. It's fine. It's your story. Oh, I just got him to say quiet to me. That's it. <laughs> so basically, yeah. So, <laughs> so basically, obviously, we're in, the, we're in the photo studio and like ready to go up for the picture. And obviously, everyone's just like, oh, yeah, what would you like your picture to be like? He's usually got the whole like thingy, like with the fist bump, like yeah. all the whole like thingy. And then uh, Mercedes goes up and says, um, can you tell me to be quiet? And he's like, what? He's like, you know, in the show where you're all like quiet. And he's like, oh, you mean like this? Quiet! And everyone just goes, ah! <laughs> um, so obviously he, he did that picture which is up there at the top yeah. um well obviously the first the bottom one is when when he did it and he was like and said quiet and obviously basically the photographer didn't capture the actual moment she captured brilliant. the moment afterwards brilliant so, that face yeah and then he was like oh that's not a good picture we'll take he another hated one it. yeah so yeah. we had that one as well and brilliant. obviously let him keep both yeah. which oh, is that's which really nice yeah, because yeah. obviously they're like 30 quid or 35 quid each each for a picture. And it yeah. got to keep two of them. So that was really was nice. That? Was it? that at the um, XL? Uh, that, London Comic Con. That um, was, um, that one. yeah. Princess but, Alexandra. Oh. Yeah, Alexandra. Oh, okay. More than it. No, the... Um, Olympia. 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 Yeah. That's yeah. the one, yeah. 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 So, and, um, yeah, he didn't mind, like, doing extra stuff. Like, so it is a certain price for, like an autograph but he signed one picture and he went I don't like that one I'm gonna sign this one as well and then like I got him to sign my poster and then I went back and asked him to do an extra little bit on it and he was just did it did it no problem so, but we yeah. had a great time like because Cobra Kai wasn't big at the time I think what was it 2019 when we went yeah it was still on YouTube and it didn't have the momentum that it's, it's got now and yeah. like we met Sholo and Jacob, they were 15 quid each just to get a picture with them and just talk to him. And their line was so dead. So yeah, we literally, we went up and spoke to him for about 20 minutes. Brilliant. And yeah, like, so we got does. our pictures signed, talked about Cobra Kai, and then we got a selfie with them. Like, I said, do you mind taking a selfie? And they're like, yeah, go up. And we took about 
a selfie with each of them and a selfie with all of us together. Nice. And it was just great because I'm sure at the time they're just building their portfolio and they're building up there kind of thing, aren't they? So they're just happy to have fans of the show there and just to talk about what they love. It is pretty late. Yeah. <laughs> I've got to watch an episode a long way up with Laura. My God, poor Laura. Um, right, but before we go, like, I need to do an official like end to, the po- to my original podcast because <laughs> I haven't really done it because we went off on a tangent. Um, so once again, thank you very much, guys, for coming and joining me on our Cobra Kai podcast. Yeah. That's a badass name for a dojo. Thank you, Jamie. You're welcome. Thank you, Mark. Thank you very much. And I'm sure we'll be seeing both of their faces again in the future. Um, but for now, Goodbye, everyone. Yes, Goodbye. Sensei. Cobra Kai, Cobra Kai, Cobra Kai, Cobra Kai, Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai. <laughs> Beautiful. Great. Okay, everybody can go to bed now. <laughs>